Recording in progress. Good evening and welcome uh, to this ordinary council meeting. I'd particularly like to welcome those who are joining us on the webcast and those who have joined us in the public gallery this evening. Before we begin, I'll call on Councillor Berrigi to um, give an acknowledgement of country. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. On behalf of all present and those watching on the webcast, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands in which we meet and to pay our respects to the ancestors and spirits past and present. Thank you. Are there any requests for leave of absence or apologies? No. Are there any disclosures of interest in relation to items on the agenda? No. This meeting is being recorded and made publicly available on Council's website. Those present should refrain from making any defamatory statements. By attending the meeting, you are giving consent to your image and voice being webcast. I'd like to remind all present that under Clause 15.2 of Council's Code of Meeting Practice, councillors, council staff and members of the public must ensure that mobile phones are turned to silent during meetings of the Council. Councillors who need to use their phone to text, talk or engage in social media activity must leave the chamber to do so. Um, that takes us to the confirmation of minutes. Is there a mover? Councillor Lamb, seconded by Councillor Santa. All those in favour? That's carried. Uh, do I have a procedural motion for um, matters by exception? Madam Mayor. I have a motion. I'd like to move the following items on Globo. Item 9.1. Item 10.3. Item 10.4. Item 10.5. And item 10.6. Uh, what about item 10.2? Uh, is there a seconder for that procedural motion? Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Gibson. Um, I put the motion. All those in favour? That is carried. Um, for the benefit of those attending, that uh, means that those matters have been, the recommendations within the Council reports have been adopted by Council in their entirety. Um, I ha have a pres uh, pres another procedural motion. There have been a number of uh, speakers who have uh, registered to speak in relation to item 10.1, the planning proposal in respect of 50 to 88 Parawine Street, Cremorne, and item 11.2, notice of rescission, the issue of owner's consent to Coles. Uh, I, um, is it, thank you, Councillor Berrigi. Uh, Madam Mayor, I'm happy to uh, move that we open the public forum for those items. Seconded by Councillor Gibson. All those in favour? Uh, that is carried. Before we move to those items, uh, there are a number of mayoral minutes. And so I will move um, in relation to the first mayoral minute, uh, which relates to the provision of a community battery in Camaray. A um, number of you m will have read it, and I don't intend to read the entirety of the uh, mayoral minute, but to suffice to say that prior to the last federal election, uh, the Honourable Chris Bowen MP, who was then Shadow Minister for Climate Change and Energy, visited Camaray Park and promised the provision of a community battery. Since the election, um, the federal government has undertaken uh, a series of actions to ensure that that can happen, not just in Camaray, but in other parts of the country. Uh, and an expression of interest uh, was opened and Osgrid applied for that federal grant in particular in relation to, uh, to the provision of a community battery in Camaray. Um, on the 29th of April, Osgrid commenced community uh, consultation and was somewhat surprised to find a great deal of community distress and anger that they were proposing to place the community battery in Green Park. Um, it shouldn't have surprised them. Not only were council sustainability staff and strategic planners counselling Osgrid as to um, the, trying to locate any community battery um, away from public open space, but particularly in a place like Camaray that has lost so much and is under such um, stress. And so the purpose of... But in any event, Osgrid took on board some of that community pushback 
and withdrew um, its application and has ceased its community consultation in relation to those locations and did so on the 3rd of May. Um, but it's really important because that community battery is something embraced by a council and the community. Uh, it, it, it meets our uh, community strategic plan objectives in relation to environmental sustainability, but it can't be a zero-sum game. It has to be that you can have a community battery without an impact on public open space. So in the body of the Mayoral Minute, you will see that there are a series of recommendations by council strategic planners in relation to the preferred location, um, a series of guidelines. And so what I propose is that we write to Osgrid to clarify, one, that it is truly a community battery and not just an augmentation um, for a substation, and urge them to locate the batter, the, uh, any community battery um, in accordance with the recommendations from council's strategic planners. Um, and that we provide a copy to the, to the relevant minister and our local state MP. Councillor Santa. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to propose an amendment. For the, yes. The, um, that council write to Osgrid stating that while supporting a community battery, which would enhance the local community's access to and lower the cost of renewable energy sources for its electrical power needs, Council seeks, colon, and then go to the points that you that are in that, the points Thank A, B, two and three. Thank you, I'll, I'll take that on as part of the, the mayoral minute. Um, do you wish to um, speak beyond that? Um, I, I just, just to say that I think um, by putting those words in, we're, um, making it quite clear that we're, it's not that we're opposing a community battery per se, but um, that we do have certain conditions and, and that it be genuinely for um, a, a, a access to renew, renewable energy and that there be no increase in costs and that it not uh, impinge on public park areas. Councillor Welsh. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just want to make some comments the 20th century grid that connects the East Coast network was designed to handle large volumes of power from two dozen coal-fired power stations, but has struggled to maintain reliability when handling inputs from millions of different sources. Australia has the highest uptake of solar of any country in the world, with over 2.15 million rooftop systems in, installed world <coughs> nationwide. The batteries will be located in communities to provide additional support to ease grid constraints and reduce electricity costs. They will provide benefits at a local distribution level for nearby residents, regardless of whether they have a rooftop solar system. Community batteries enable households to store energy for use during peak times and share excess power with other households, further encouraging the uptake of solar PV systems and easing prices through redu reduced network costs. The battery will be the size of a large car. <laughs> I trust that Osgrid will be able to find an appropriate location somewhere in, Cam in Camaray that encompasses all the Council's strategic planners' recommendations. We need these batteries to help ensure reliable electricity supply and to keep costs down. I support the motion. Thank you. Councillor Burke and then Councillor Berry. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I, I concur with the comments by Councillor Welch. Um, I did go to the Osgrid Open Day and uh, found it informative, um, although there was significant pushback from the community about the loss of um, critical open space, which uh, we need a net gain in environment um, sustainability, not, not a net loss, so there, there is a significant concern there. Um, for the information of um, uh, all, including particularly councillors, um, who know that I chair the Environment Reference Group. Um, the meeting on Tuesday 16th of May will have Osgrid come along and talk to us. Um, so I would encourage councillors in particular to come along and ask key questions of Osgrid um, and we can take it from there. I support the motion as well. Thank you, Councillor Burke. Councillor Berrigi. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, I support the motion and I, I just find it it's just disappointing that the first time that we go out there's this um, community um, confusion. I think there was a lot of people that were confused as to whether it was truly a community battery or whether it was just going to be an energy substation and that really caused a lot of angst. Um, and it's unnecessary angst because I think everyone's on the same page and very positive about all of this. 
But uh, but when this kind of thing happens, it really throws um, throws people like to be a bit cynical about it. So I hope that Osgood take everything on board. And thank you, um, Councillor Burke. That was um, informative that Osgood are coming. Um, and maybe we could make the other people who are affected aware um, so that they can also come and ask questions. So Osgood can be um, really uh, able to communicate to us. So um, thank you, Mayor, for putting it on the agenda. It has caused a lot of angst in Camaray. Thank you. Is there a no further... Speakers, I put them in at all those in favour. That's carried unanimously. That brings us to the second mayoral minute this evening. Uh, this is a minute that um, we have been urged to be put forward by mayors around the state, by local government New South Wales. Um, it relates to damaging increases in the emergency services levy costs. Um, just, I won't speak to the whole of the um, minute, but in short, um, the, we're back here where the government is is proposing um, to increase the emergency service levy and effectively rely on local government to it's a cost shift to local government to fund emergency services through the levy. Um, it's going to make it difficult for councils, including ours across the state, uh, to uh, to meet that levy in in a year where the um, IPART special um, the IPART rate peg was very low and had to be uh, scaffolded um, belatedly. Um, for many in councils, including this council, um, there will be uh, a significant impost um, on us and we will have to readjust our budgets. Others, other councils may suffer at a much um, more critical level and have to, um, have to cease and <coughs> reduce services. Um, at a time when people are relying on councils across the state to deliver um, you know, cost of living and housing crisis. Um, and so I commend um, the motion to you that we um, join with Local Government New South Wales and our fellow councils around the state uh, to lobby this state government uh, not to, to proceed in this way. Councillor Berrigan. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I support the motion. I just, again, find it disappointing. I feel like it's Groundhog Day, that every time um, the state government wants someone to do their dirty work, then all of a sudden it's given to councils <coughs> to collect money on their behalf. And that's just another issue for councils to be the, the collector. But it also is for us then to explain that this is not something that we are getting. It's something that we then pass through to the, to the New South Wales government. It's not that um, the emergency services budget is not important, but it is a budget for the New South Wales government and they should be collecting it. And I support the motion that this impost not be uh, um, put on to councils to, uh, to do that work. I agree with Councillor Berrigie. I understand the new state government has to find cost savings, but to cost shift the emergency services levy onto local councils will result in a decrease in local services and local infrastructure projects. I support the motion. Are there any other speakers? I put the motion. All those in favour? That's carried. Um, that takes us to the third and last um, mayoral minute. Uh, this is um, this is some some good news. Uh, last week, on the third of May, uh, the Land and Environment Court Senior Commissioner Dixon dismissed the appeal um, that sought the demolition of the MLC building on Miller Street and the construction of a new 27-storey commercial building in its place. Um, for some time, um, for well, for a very long time. The MLC building has been uh, an item of local significance um, and this council joined with um, a coalition of everyone from the, the, the Institute of Engineers to the Institute of Architects to Docomomo um, seeking to have um, the state heritage significance of the MLC building recognised. One of the byproducts of that most recent um, Land Environment Court appeal is that Senior Commissioner Dixon found that um, the building does have state heritage significance, as had previously the Independent Planning Commission and many others. The, the only reason that the previous government did not list 
the item was on a technical defect that was not corrected by the former minister. And so I think we have to take this opportunity to approach the new minister for heritage, the Honourable Penny Sharp, and urge her to urgently act to take all steps necessary to direct the listing of the MLC building onto the State Heritage Register. Um, are there any speakers? Uh, Councillor Burke. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I want to state my great relief and excitement at that decision. Um, this is our heritage. Uh, this is a beautiful building that has been allowed to, to uh, I guess, be run down somewhat, unfortunately. But it is a beautiful building. Um, it is a reasonable height. Uh, it is a great setback that allows um, human interaction with uh, green and open space in the area. Um, and I think that um, I fully support this motion um, and hopefully along with a Miller place that we get, get in, in place at some stage, um, it'll be a, a great, it'll protect the, the sunlight and it'll be a great uh, place uh, in the centre of our CBD. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Councillor Berrigi. Thank you, Mayor. Um, like you, I was thrilled when the decision came down and it's a shame that it had to be fought so hard. Um, whether you like the MLC building or not, um, it isn't actually the question whether you like it. It is part of our heritage. Um, it's a very famous building and, like Councillor Burke said, um, the existing building is of reasonable size and reasonable height and allows for great um, uh, solar access. Um, and we should celebrate this because we should be standing up for our, our buildings, our heritage and our amenity. And too often we are seeing these days at the, at the whim of a developer who buys up lots of... Um, lovely buildings just to knock them over and put up uh, residential flat buildings. Now there's places for those buildings and there are sometimes not places for those buildings. This is a wonderful building. I don't necessarily love it. It's not about me. Uh, it's about North Sydney and the history of North Sydney and everybody looks at it can tell the story of the MLC and that's great because it means that people are talking about North Sydney. So I was thrilled to get hit when the decision was handed down and I thank the Mayor for um, quickly um, writing to the new minister and asking for it to be state heritage listed. Councillor Spence Lee. Thank you. Um, I, I tend to find the MLC building not that attractive, each to their own. Um, having rented many, many floors of office space in North Sydney, I would hate to actually have my staff in there because it's not a practical layout. Uh, but do we need another 27 floor glass building? Looks like every other glass building in the North Sydney CBD, we don't. This is, um, this is diverse, it's unique, it's something I would like to, my grandchildren to walk past and, and look at you know, from a perspective of it being you know, 100 years old, not, uh, you know, not 60 or 70 years old. So, um, yeah, thank you, Mayor, for this note. I think it's a, an important direction, even if not all of us agree that it's an attractive building uh, in our own eyes. Thank you. Um, I'll just say briefly um, that it doesn't have to be attractive. It's the, the essence of the MLC building was it was the first of the modern movement. It was once the tallest building in North Sydney. Um, and it, from an engineering perspective, was one of the first curtain walls constructed in the country. Um, so it has a place um, in, a, in our heritage um, for many of, of the qualities that all of you have spoken about tonight. So um, I urge you all to support the motion, all, and I'll put it to you, all those in favour. Thank you. That's carried unanimously. That takes us now to item 10.1, um, the planning proposal in relation to 50 to 88 Parawain Street, Cremorn. Um, there are five registered speakers. Uh, the first is Jennifer Hill. If you would come forward uh, to the table and give your name, um, your address and who you were representing. No. Um, the next registered speaker is Graham Skerritt. Um, I'm not speaking, I just came along in case Councillor Burns. Okay, thank you. The next registered speaker is Fiona Gracie, if you would come forward. Good evening and uh, thank you Mayor and Councillors for giving me the opportunity to address you tonight. My name is Fiona Gracie and I'm the founding member of the Cremorn Conservation Group and I'm also a member of the Cremorn Streetscape Committee. 
I represent hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of voices in our local community. And in this particular instance, over 770 of those people in our local community have signed a petition looking to save these cottages. In addition to that, when the developer of the site held a community engagement session in February of this year, we did an exit poll of all those who attended that session and nearly 97% answered one question. We only asked one question and that was, having seen the proposed concepts for the development, were they in favour of preserving the cottages? 97%, well, just under 97% answered yes, they wanted them conserved. More recently, when the Commissioner from the Land and Environment Court made a site visit to Parowin Street in preparation to hearing an appeal by the developer to overturn the current IHOs, which are due to expire in the next week or two. The commissioner was greeted by hundreds of people, well, just on 100 people, to be exact, that lined the south side of Parowin Street and stood there quietly showing their support for the retention of these cottages. Now, I ask you, why would all these people stand up to see these cottages retained. And I think, in addition to the written submission that I've made, and I'm sure others have made to you, I think the answer comes down to history. But history is important. History provides us with a sense of our place and identity. When we lose our history, we lose a part of our identity. If these cottages were to be demolished, then we will lose a part of our identity. And that identity is bound up in the fact that the earliest people who came into Cremorne to help develop this particular part of the locality were the early workers, what we would have called in the day the blue-collar workers. They were the charwomen. They were the bricklayers. They were the plumbers, the butchers. They lived in these cottages, and they're the last remaining form of these cottages in this particular locality. So they are a rare form, as was evidenced by the expert report from Lucas Stapleton Johnson. So history is important. So retaining history means that the workers of today and the people who live in and around Cremorne have an average age of just over 38. So we're talking about today's workers living in Cremorne, walking down Parowin Street, and having a sense that where they are today comes from the fact that the workers of yesteryear lived in this street. So if those cottages were to be demolished, then they will lose that sense. They will lose their place. They will lose part of their identity. That's your time. So I ask you to support this motion tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions of the speaker? No, thank you very much for your participation. You. The next speaker is Davy MacDonald. Thank you. If you give your name, address, and who you are. David McDonald, 32 Haybury Street, Crow's Nest. And I think I have to add an apology to the previous, the previous speaker. I came here to, and I think I still do, support the proposal. But one of the things which is in a glaring admission for me is that I started to look at this because it was brought to the Combined Precinct Committee. And as a result of what was shared there and told, I went out to investigate for myself and look at it. And I did read every submission. And I would address the previous speaker. I would love to come and talk to you and, and, and exchange ideas with you where I might be wrong, because I don't like to take a position of one, especially since I come from over the other side. And I find that embarrassing. But as I say, I came here because it was brought up in the CPC, and I decided to investigate. I like the project, and one of the things that concerned me when I read some of the objections was the matter of ageism. Now, councillors, I've shared with you what I've written, and I will rest myself on that, but it did concern me in respect of some of the attitudes that seemed to almost suggest that it was a nursing home, which it isn't, and that retirees such as me might be past our use-by day. And they can bring so much diversity to the community. And I think 
retirees, elderly people are entitled to live where their friends are or where their family want to bring them to. And I think that's something we need to embrace. I did, as you know, in there, express concern for the people that were renting. And although I know on one of the streets, Gerrard Street, if I pronounce it correctly, they were informed before they took on those properties, I have put a pr pr uh, proposal to you of how one might assist those people. Should this project go ahead, could be assisted in rehoming, so on and so forth, and even that the developers might forego the rent for the period going forward from now. I'm not sure about the heritage side of things. I'm not a, an expert, but I did go down and look. First of all, on Google Maps, then I drove down, and last week I went and looked there. It was apparent that many of the properties are not in the best state of repair, and I challenge that they have the features that necessarily warrant, in some respects, heritage. What I found on Gerrard Street, they've got some beautiful, uh, in one of them, I think it was 65, has a beautiful uh, hallway uh, roof lining, uh, you know, for the hall, which is fabulous. But I kind of feel in a little bit difficult because I know when people came from on a project in Haybury that I would be somewhat incensed having somebody come from the other side. So I apologise to that person and I really would like to have a chat with that group because I've got an open mind on it. I was concerned about the ageism aspect of it. Heritage, yes and no, I'm not against heritage. And I think the benefits that elderly people for future projects bring a great diversity to us. Thank you, Mayor. I'm sure I went over th Thank three you. minutes. Thank you. Um, are there any questions of the speaker? No. Thank you for your participation. Thank you. That brings us to the last registered speaker, Christopher Holding. If you would come forward and give your name, address and who you represent. Hi. Good evening, uh, Mayor and Councillors. I'm Chris Holding and um, I'm speaking tonight as a concerned resident and former co-chair of Brightmoor Precinct and a current member of Cremorne Conservation Group and the Cremorne Streetscape Committee. My involvement with these various local groups over the last seven years means I've met and heard the concerns of many residents and former owners. It's fair to say that I and the local community have been aware for some time of the prospect for a large aged care facility being constructed on Parawine Street. The developer has never entered an application to the council or engaged with the community in any real sense until recently. Instead, they spent around five years securing rights or ownership to over 20 properties, which equates to approximately half of one side of Parawine Street. 12 of these homes have been professionally identified as having significant heritage value. During the last four to five years, many of these houses have been rented out on short-term short leases, and this in turn has led to an increase in decay, decay via neglect and dilapidation. The interim heritage orders, wonderfully enabled by this council, have been an enormous help in preventing demolition of these homes and bringing us to this position. It's important we continue to balance the provision of any aged care facility by also preserving and reinvigorating historic workers' cottages from the turn of the 20th century. This intelligent approach allows for a diverse, multi-layered streetscape and provides an important reminder of the Australia we were while still providing space for what we are to become. Yes, we need apartments and townhouses, but we also need to balance and protect our history. We can have both, and this planning proposal allows that to flourish. Only by securing these nominated homes and protecting the environment for this or any future development can we ensure that no one single vision is allowed to eviscerate Cremorne. I firmly support this planning proposal as it addresses and blends the vibrancy of the local economy, the preservation of heritage and allows sympathetic space for progress. I ask that you support it. And one final comment, I'll just uh, refer to the other speaker. It's the, the proposal that's been put forward isn't a retirement village. So it's not for that use. Thank you. Are there any questions? Councillor Gibson. No, I, I just want to have a motion. Oh, thank, thank you very much and thank you for your participation. Councillor Gibson, you have a motion? Yes, I'm happy to move the motion, Mayor. Uh, I think we've heard from our community.
We've heard from our community tonight, and when our community um, send us emails by the dozens, we better um, we better take notice. And when our community members um, come out in a cold, miserable night like this um, to tell us how they feel, we need to listen to them. I have to say, pa Para Wins. Oh, you've been... Uh, I called Jennifer Hill first. Is that who that is? We're, and I'm sorry, we've moved into... Um, I, I think she should be allowed to speak, Mayor. If, well, if, if, there is, if there is a motion from the floor... I'll move a motion... To, I'll move a motion... Okay. Um, to return to the public forum. Thank you. Seconded by Councillor um, Spencerley. I put that to the floor. All those in favour? That's carried. If you take your seat and turn off your microphone. Ms Hill, if you would come forward and say your name, address and who you represent. Good evening. My name is Jennifer Hill. I'm um, a heritage consultant. Um, I'm here to speak for the proposal. Um, I have 40 years experience as a registered heritage architect. I've worked in numerous lo local government areas, RIDE, South Sydney, City of Sydney, COGRA, North Sydney Council. Normally, because there's a land and environment court uh, matter occurring, it wouldn't be appropriate for me to provide any advice, so I'm not providing any advice that relates to that. I'm simply commenting on the reports that are in the public domain. It's important that the um, comments about history being important, and that is why the criteria for listing, according to the Heritage Office, and not listing has thresholds. Everything has a history. But the process is to identify history that is significant to the area. And this is a council that's been extensively well studied, had five heritage reviews, various proposals to, in fact, uh, the Cremorne 2000 proposal anticipated full demolition of the buildings in Parawin Street. Um, so there's a history here, and there's a reason why this area has been identified as such because of its history. Um, that's the reason it's had pressure on it for parking, why none of the street trees, the front fences, the front gardens are retained while the buildings are in a very poor condition. The consultant report, which I've read that and the addendum, um, identified that the street didn't reach the threshold for listing as a conservation area. Now that's a much lower threshold. They then have come back and said that certain individual buildings do reach a threshold for listing. Some of the buildings that they are actually proposing, like number 56, Parawine Street, are highly altered Victorian terraces. The whole front facade has been pushed back. It has a two-storey enormous highly visible addition on the rear and would not meet the cr uh, criteria for integrity that would allow that building to remain. There's also a, an addendum report that talks about 82 to 88 having reached a higher level than just simply representing a historic pattern of subdivision, which every house in every building in North Sydney reflects the subdivision of the area. The threshold is usually higher than that. And the threshold that's been proposed to link them to a, a building group called Harbert Brothers have actually identified 51 buildings in the local area. And in that report, identified many buildings that are of far greater integrity and quality than the ones that are in this street. So the issue in the end is that um, there is a process of um, assessing um, this process. It's going on at the moment in the Land and Environment Court. It's my understanding that the planning panel have recommended that there would be benefit in delaying until that process occurs before you actually proceed to um, nominate these buildings as part of a planning proposal. Thank you. Any questions for the speaker? Mm -hmm. Councillor Gibson. Um, I, uh, Thanks. Yeah. No, I don't have a question. I'm just going to continue on with my motion. Well, this part of the public forum. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Ms Hill. Thank you for your participation. Oh, I'm sorry, there is a question. Thank you, Councillor Spencer. Um, one of the arguments I've heard quite often against um, heritage listing these properties is that there are better examples of heritage uh, structures or buildings in other parts of, um, you know, of the area of the, of the uh, suburb. I really struggle with this argument, which I think you mentioned, because if you follow that through, we will only end up with a few and a very few examples of, of heritage architecture. Mm -hmm. um, if we always say, well, we can knock this down because there's something better, we only end up with the better that's left and we lose vast swathes of, of properties 
that in their own right, you know, do represent our, our heritage. So can you please explain? Sorry, if you could you direct succinct. Sorry, direct and succinct. Argument. <laughs> How do we end up uh, keeping our heritage across the suburb if there is always this view that there's something better, therefore we don't need to keep this? Okay. <clears throat> I, I think it's a very good question. Okay, so the point is that, like, I've actually done inventory sheets for all the government areas, not for North Sydney. I've done other things for you. Um, the process is, obviously, there are thousands of buildings in a council area, and part of the process of doing a heritage review is to use a systematic criteria to look at what's its historic significance, what's its aesthetic quality, what's its integrity to form that judgment. All of this is guided by the guidelines from the Heritage Office about reaching thresholds. My point wasn't that, um, that there are other examples. My point is that the buildings that are being proposed for listing, which include um, buildings that are, have a lower level of integrity, have had painted facades when a face brick facade is a critical aspect of the building who've had their change roof materials according to the consultant's own report, that if one is saying that these buildings are representing Harbert Brothers, there are 51 other examples in their addendum report, all of which would better represent that. So the issue in the end is, is one going to list all 51 buildings associated with Harbert? First, we have to establish if the Harbert Brothers are even reaching the threshold for listing as being significant, unlike, for instance, the development in Shell Cove Road, which I'm sure you're all familiar with, which is associated with Vernon. We don't have to establish that Vernon is important. We already know from other ADB, et cetera, that he is. So in the case here, I'm not saying that because there are other buildings that are better. I'm simply saying that these buildings have been identified in this street, but in fact, if one does the more comprehensive approach and looks at Harbert Brothers, um, firstly, they are yet to establish if they have reached a level of significance. And then there are at least 51 buildings by these peop people, and as we know at the moment. And of those, probably about 60% of them are highly intact. So why would you go and list something that's not highly intact when you've got the potential for it to be highly intact? And you're also your point about the comparison. The, we've based ours on an extensive, but every building in the um, heritage inventory for North Sydney, comparing them with um, workers' cottages, so you've got a direct comparison, comparing them with speculative federation development. You know, you need to see what you've listed, and if the things that you're now proposing to list aren't meeting the same threshold, then it raises questions as to whether you are meeting the threshold. The other aspect, if you look at the buildings that you do have listed, you'll also see it's not just the buildings themselves, it's also their wider setting. The reason Parawine Street is under pressure is because of a range of things. Its history of being proposed for development, its current zoning, which allows demolition and four-storey buildings, the fact that it's got a car parking problem, the fact that there are no front fences, front gardens, there are car stands and there are no street trees. If you look at the report from the Lucas Stapleton, you'll see some wonderful images of what Parawheen Street used to look like. There are many streets like that that still look like that in North Sydney, and that is why those streets are reaching the threshold for listing. In, in my opinion, and also your own consultant's opinion, this street doesn't meet the listing for um, a conservation area, but then they go on to actually find a reason to list it individually. It's a much harder test, and it's a test that I don't think they've been successful at achieving, but ultimately, at the moment, you've got a land and environment court hearing that's actually going to assess that matter. And so the issue is, do you proceed with a planning proposal or as your planning panel recommended, you wait until you get the decision from the Land Environment Court? So I'm suggesting I'm speaking in favour of that. Thank you. Councillor Burke, do you have a question? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Just a couple of quick questions. Um, is there potential to restore some heritage, um, things like painted walls? And secondly, um, just your opening statement was words to the effect of, I support this proposal, if I recall correctly. Could you just clarify what sure. you meant by that? Thank okay. you. I'm, I'm speaking here in support of the proposal for a retirement village in Parawheen Street that requires the demolition of um, a number of buildings in Parawheen Street, of which 12 have been nominated for interim listing. So, no, I'm not speaking to the proposal for listing. In terms of the heritage of the building, and I've often worked on projects where, as a result of <coughs> development occurring, which is in fact proposed with this development for the retirement village, 
they're not proposing to demolish all the houses. They're actually proposing to retain a number of them. They're proposing to reinstate their front fences, their front gardens and the street trees, all of which because they're doing underground parking. So in terms of the character of this street, um, it will improve from what you're actually currently seeing. Does that answer your question? Um, yes, so there is the potential to restore heritage yes. items. Yep, thank you. Yep. Any other questions for the speaker? Thank you for your participation. You. Councillor, we now, we now return to the motion. There is a motion before on the floor. Moved by Councillor Gibson, seconded by Councillor Berrigi. Look, I, I Councillor do, I do, Gibson, you speak to... Yes, I do thank the previous speaker. You've raised many interesting points there. And I also thank um, Davy MacDonald for bringing up um, the subject of ageism and... Um, and the benefit, and pointing out the benefits of having um, uh, elderly people living in our community. But still, as I said when I stood up earlier, we have been elected to listen to our community. Um, there's two matters on the agenda tonight, um, this one and then the following one, where the community have spoken loud and clear. And I intend to listen to the community <coughs> on both of those matters. When people come out on a cold, um, miserable evening to tell us how they, how they feel about a matter, we should be listening. We've also had numerous emails that have come through over the weekend and today, and they're all saying the same thing. Now, Parraween Street, I'd have to describe it as a, a, a quirky, sort of quaint street. It is a, a really interesting street. We've got modern buildings on one side. We've got some lovely apartments there with beautiful penthouses and they're all only a few years old and um, look, look, you know, they, they look terribly nice. And on the other side we've got these little workers' cottages, some of them in, um, in a state of dilapidation, but um, none of the, nonetheless, it's a, it's a very unusual street, but the people that live near it tell me that it works. They like it. They like the idea that we've got really contemporary buildings on one side of the street and low-scale workers' cottages on the other. It just seems to work. And I think we need to listen to those people that, um, that live um, on and, and near Parraween Street and, um, and continue with our efforts to save these cottages. I don't think any of them are beyond repair. Um, they could easily be resold, put back onto the market, or they could be um, uh, renovated and then put back on the market. But anyway, they, they, they could be sold and restored and brought back to, um, brought back to um, the, the, the cute little cottages that they always have been, and we could have families continuing to live in those cottages. Councillor Gibson, could you turn off your microphone? Councillor Spencerly. Uh, thank you, Mitt. Well, I'm delighted to see this uh, motion up tonight. I'm delighted to see um, that there's been a great deal of work put into uh, assessing the cottages, assessing the rezoning, um, which are two of the greatest issues that, that I saw when and that made me run for council um, right at the beginning. So, in fact, at my first council meeting, uh, I moved for the, uh, the interim heritage order to be placed on, on these cottages. Um, that's because the community wants this. It's because there is heritage value there. If we want to be absolute technocrats, we can sit there and we can say, well, you know, it's been painted a different colour or it's... it's... But these are heritage properties that were uh, fundamental in building the area that are fundamental to the character of the area. I thank God that in, you know, early Italian... 1800s that we didn't have councils and experts coming on and deciding that many of the items that were run down and dilapidated were not worthy of keeping. Thank God the Italians had some vision. We wouldn't have the Colosseum, wouldn't have the Forum, these things would have all been knocked down because they didn't quite fit the perfect definition of what, uh, what heritage is. Heritage, ladies and gentlemen, is our heritage. We own it. it what drives us? It's what we remember, it's what we show our children, it's what we show our grandchildren. And I tell you, in 150 years, when kids walk down Parraween Street, they will adore these cottages. 
whether they're the most perfect example or the second most perfect example or the worst example of, of its type in our area, they will adore these cottages. This is the responsibility that we have in front of us, is to protect the heritage of our areas for future generations. So I encourage you all to support this motion. It is our strongest weapon in, in the fight to keep these cottages and to put a mark in the sand that we want heritage and balanced development in our community. Thank you. City Councillor Welsh. I just want to restate exactly what Ms Gracie said. Our heritage tells the story of our past and it reflects the values, beliefs and traditions that have shaped us as a society. By protecting our heritage, we can ensure that future generations have access to this knowledge and can learn from it. Thank you. Are there any? Councillor Santa. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I have to say that um, I once owned and lived in a, a, the counterpart of these cottages in Adelaide, in North Adelaide. Uh, they were called the Arms Cottages, and I owned one of them and lived in one. And I have to say that, um, to me, it's an, it was an example of just how much more the good citizens of Adelaide have done to preserve their heritage and their history than we unfortunately have done in Sydney. And I think that here's an opportunity to show that we can do the same thing here. Um, I can also ask why the uh, local planning panel recommended deferral when to do so would ensure that the interim, interim heritage orders would lapse and therefore enable demolition of these properties to proceed. To me, it's reminiscent of a death penalty um, implementation. Once the penalty has been implemented, it's rather hard to revoke it. So I, I would I strongly recommend this motion. I'm delighted to, to be given the opportunity to vote in favour of it. There any other speakers? I will Councillor Berrigan. Thank you, Mayor. I won't. Um, I agree, obviously, with all the other speakers. This is um, this is something. It's not just a popularity contest that the community turn up and this is what the community wants because um, it's more than that. Um, the council is just not here to respond to. Um, that, that the council is here to make decisions and make good decisions based on evidence, based on reports, based on uh, the work before us, um, and based on what's good for the community going forward. And this is all of that. That it has community support is great. That so many people have emailed um, is wonderful. And I'd just like to apologise to those that I haven't got back to. I'm sure not everybody's had a chance to get back to everyone that's emailed us, um, but we will. And this is our getting back to you as well. Um, I would just like to thank our council staff for the excellent report. Um, these are, this is a lot of work. Um, there's been a lot of effort going through, a lot of reports. Uh, the fact that the report, as I was just looking up, is 350 pages long is evidence of the work that has been put in. So the community support is wonderful, but we actually have uh, proper evidence-based decision-making happening here. We have a report in front of us that gives us all the reasons for moving this forward. Um, and I'd just like to acknowledge the work of the council staff and also um, uh, support the motion. Thank you. Uh, thank you. In the absence of any other speakers, Councillor Gibson, do you wish to exercise a right of reply? Thanks, Mayor. I think enough has been um, said on, on this matter. Um, we need to listen to our community and our community have spoken loud and clear. Um, if you t turn off your microphone on that basis, I will put the motion. All those in favour? Thank you. That's carried unanimously. That takes us to the next item on the agenda, item 10.2, the, sorry, 11.2, the, um, 10.2, 10 <laughs> uh, the Jacarandas. Councillor, Councillor Lamb. Yes, thank you. I would like to put the recommendation forward and also change point one to the council, sorry, the council adopts a 12 month trial period of option three of the trees for newborns gifts program. Seconded by Councillor Berrigi. Um, do you wish to speak to your motion? Yes, I'll speak briefly. This motion is just a great opportunity to increase tree canopy, which has proven benefits for our entire community in its extremely interesting way to embrace our heritage as a community, if that heritage is true or not, and just work towards the community in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other speakers? Mm. Councillor Santa. Thank you, Mayor. I also support this motion. Um, 
I supported, um, especially given the loss of the urban tree canopy we've suffered um, in North Sydney. And I'd like to say that um, I hope that native trees are used as much as possible, <laughs> as well as jacarandas. Um, perhaps we could extend this to other programs as well to expand the incentives to plant um, trees here. Uh, perhaps also we could undertake an educational program for owners of strata company title properties to encourage them to allow these trees to be planted. Um, I note also that uh, part of the recommendation contains a, 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 a view that uh, the trees should come from tube stock. And it was very interesting on a recent issue, issue, um, program, Gardening Australia, where they said that trees that are grown from tube stock have a much better chance of surviving than trees that are mature when, or, or semi-mature when they're planted. So I think that's a great idea as well. So I thoroughly endorse this, uh, this motion and I will be supporting it. Councillor Burke. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I support this motion and I was reading um, uh, Councillor Lamb's comments in the Sydney Morning Herald yesterday and it was great to see her stating the importance of native species um, in this program. Um, and I really look forward to uh, our tree canopy recovering from uh, the loss of over 25% in the last 15 years due mainly to uh, densification with apartments and so forth. So um, I certainly commend this motion. Thank you. Are there any other speakers? I put the motion. All those in favour? Again, that's carried unanimously. Thank you. Uh, that takes us uh, to the two rescission motions. Um, the first is item 11.1, um, uh, the notice of rescission in relation to Montford uh, Street Road closure. Councillor Mutton, did you wish to move the rescission? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Martin, seconded by Councillor Gibson. I did have my light on um, Do you, either of you wish to speak to it? Uh, Thank yes. you, Councillor Martin. Mayor, um, I've given a lot of thought to this, as I imagine most of us have. If you, if you look at... Am I now audible? We have streets, we have roads, we have cul-de-sacs. Throughout the history of our common law, these all have one thing in common. They allow people to get from one point to another. And we have a, a system of law in this state, indeed in this country, that prevents land from becoming landlocked, from not having access to streets to roads or to avenues. And when I look at this, we have a situation where all of the properties fronting the street fall into one ownership. And suddenly that raises the question about what utility this road has if it's continued as a road. And the utility is only to the neighbouring landowners. And it seems to me that this gives us an opportunity that is very worthy of consideration. An opportunity to realise the value of this piece of land that is now no longer required as a road, an avenue or a cul-de-sac. We shouldn't set about our day saying, because it's a road now, it should be a road forever. We need to look at these things in the context of what is best for our broader community. So here we're balancing the rights of the adjoining landowners, who no longer have a use for this land, against the rights of the broader community that would re-benefit really benefit from the repurposing of this asset. And I think that's the key. It is the repurposing of an asset with massively diminished utility as a road. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Speakers, Councillor Gibson. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, 
What I was going to move if this rescission motion is successful, and I think it would be a very um, sensible outcome, I want to move that we go for a site meeting. I think this matter came up um, when this council was still quite new, and I don't know that all councils, all councillors were, um, uh, uh, were, were, were that knowledgeable about this road and what um, the school um, would like to do with it. The school actually would like to use this for extra sporting facilities. Now, we had a mayoral minute not long ago where the mayor was writing to schools saying that uh, would the private schools in our area, you know, consider letting their sports facilities be used by um, uh, the, the other, other members of the community, particularly by local public schools. And look, I, 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 would, see, I would see this as an opportunity where a school that has absolutely no open space and no sporting facilities um, uh, have a possibility of providing those facilities for their own students but for, um, for the greater community. But all I wanted to do was simply say um, that, we, um, that we rescind this motion and go to a site meeting. If at the site meeting everyone decides we just want to leave it as is, well, so be it. But I, I think it deserves some more consideration than what it has been given. So please vote to rescind this motion and um, go to a site meeting so you can be fully informed about all the issues. Um, thank you, Councillor Berrigan. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I won't be supporting this rescission motion. This is the selling of public land. This is the privatisation of public land. And to suggest that the school wants it for sporting facilities when the school has just undertaken a massive, massive building project and has sporting facilities. If they wanted additional sporting facilities, they could have built them then. We often get uh, requests from uh, people wanting to buy bits of public open space. They live on a corner, there's a little bit of land next to them, they use the land, not many other people do use the land, you know, there's a swing on it or what, and they'd like to buy the land. Well, if council did that every time, council would end up with no land. The purpose of the land is to provide uh, the, the, the community with open space, with relief, with uh, uh, roads, and with parking spaces, and I find it absolutely astonishing that I am being asked to vote on a rescission to remove, I think it is, 18 parking spaces. Um, I thought, no, I I thought parking... Order, Mayor. That wasn't being suggested. A site meeting was being suggested. No. Oh, no. no the, the site so, sorry, was being Councillor Gibson, I'll rule on the Port of Order and I rule against you. What is being asked here is not a site meeting. What we are debating is rescinding the, pre the proceeding to the sale of the particular land and, and the development of no. a policy. No, that no, is that's, what... That's not Councillor what Gibson, you're, you're you didn't move that. Councillor Gibson, Councillor Gibson, Clause 6.9 requires... Councillor Gibson, Clause 6.9 requires know, man, that when the that chair week. is speaking you and it, when you eventually you show respect week. for the chair, I'll have to stop. I will stop. You say it every week. Councillor Gibson, again... misinterpreting my... No, Councillor Gibson, I'm not missing interpreting the motion. Councillor Gibson, I call you to order. Thank you, Cease speaking. I've ruled against you because you seem confused. The, what is before the council is the notice of rescission, not a foreshadowed motion if the rescission is successful. Thank you, Councillor, Councillor Berrigi, if you would continue with the floor. Thank you, Mayor. So what, will, what is happening here is that we will lose 18 parking spaces and that's what's before us. Um, and this is public space. We have parking at a premium, apparently. We have had debates in here about how we need more parking and all of a sudden we're selling parking. This is asset recycling, either, otherwise known as the sale of assets. Um, and just because a school and a, a piece of road, it's not landlocked. You can get in it and you can get out of it. That isn't landlocked. Landlocked is when you can't get in it and you can't get out of it. So. Um, I completely uh, oppose this rescission motion and will be voting against it. We do not need to sell the land. Um, I see no reason to sell the land. 
Um, and it is just, uh, if we do this, then we then invite everybody else who sees a piece of land that they might like to have as theirs to come and actually ask if they can buy it as well. Mayor, point of order again. There's no motion to sell the land. Sorry, uh, Councillor no, Gibson, I'm ruling to, against you again. You, need to you see, Councillor Gibson, steep, steep, keep speaking. We well, might, uh, we might go Gibson, to the site meeting no, and decide Cal we'll close Cal it off and Councillor Gibson, you park. seem exceptionally confused. I'm this is confused. a rescission motion. I'm not what confused. What is before the council? I'm not confused. Councillor Gibson, cease to speak. I'm not confused. Councillor Mayor. Gibson, I call you and to order very in accordance with that. clause 6.9 yep. of the Code of Meeting Practice. I wasn't All suggesting selling it. I was suggesting Cou a site Councillor meeting. Councillor Gibson, if this rescission is successful, it, re it rescinds the, the pro that, that we do not proceed with the sale of the land. So I'm ruling against you and I'd ask that you please remind yourself of principles 2.1 of the Code oh, of Mayor, Meeting I've Practice that, so that requires times, respect please. and orderliness. That's very dumb. Thank you, Councillor Spensley. Um, I'm actually a little confused we're, we're on the definition of landlocked, but this is, and I think the talking heads, I had to Google that, the talking heads say this best, which is we're on a road to nowhere. This is a road to nowhere. You enter the road, everything is owned by the school, you turn around at the end of the street, you come back out, everything is owned by the school. Those 18 car spaces are used by the school. They're, they're, they're effectively parking for, for the teachers and the administrators that work there. Um, I'm not necessarily in, a, in agreement with selling the land. I'd like to know what public benefit we would get if we sold the land. If it was to be turned into open space or sporting facilities or something that could be of community benefit, I'd be absolutely in favour of selling the land. So, you know, in my humble opinion, I think this is a useless bit of road. It's on a road to nowhere. Everything around it is owned by the one tenant. If there is a better and higher use than us maintaining a piece of bitumen that only gets used for people mostly who work at the school to come in, turn around, look for a parking spot and move on, I would love to see this bit of land used in a much more efficient and beneficial way. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other speakers? Councillor Santa. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. I'd just like, just like to refer to the original motion as put, uh, um, or the original report that was put, which says the following. Um, the services in the road and the need to preserve parking within Area 27, which will lose 18 public car spaces if the road is permanently closed and sold. I think it was quite clear that if that um, had gone through, then we would have lost 18 public car spaces. Any other speakers? Um, I'll put the rescission. All those in favour? All those against? The rescission is lost. That takes us to the final item on the agenda, the rescission in relation to item 11.2. Councillor Mutton, do you wish to move the rescission? Well, we have speakers on this. Oh, sorry. You, you've totally Thank disregarded you. no, the speakers. speakers. Thank you, is um, registered to speak. There are 10. The first registered speaker is Timothy Atkins. If you come forward and give your name, address and who you represent. Good evening, councillors. Thank you for the opportunity to speak this evening. My name is Tim Atkins. I'm a director of Titanium Property and we were representing Coles. At the last council meeting, uh, Coles was granted permission to lodge a development application covering the both sites, Coles site and the council car park. Coles want to maintain the village atmosphere and develop a world-class shopping experience for the customers and the community. In the coming days, we'll be continuing our engagement process with precinct meetings and reaching out to the Chamber of Commerce and the leadership of local traders to consult on these and other design issues they may wish to raise. Tonight, I'd like to address three myths that seem to be prevailing. First, Coles is not seeking, nor is it getting any favoured treatment from Council by approving this application to apply for a DA. Coles has made its intentions clear to Council and all the other landowners over the last 12 months that it intends to proceed with this application. Coles has not been lobbying councillors to seek any favour or special consideration. Due to the nature of this, 
and the sensitivity around council owning the land. The resolution passed by council last week does not allow Coles to build anything on the land. It simply allows us to submit an application. And I have advice from Alan's here if council wishes to advise it, advise, use it to uh, consider this further in relation to this. There are two separate issues here. One is allowing us to make an application and the second is how to deal with the land. This, app, this decision is a first decision in many that council will need to make for this application to proceed. It is just commencing. In November, the Woolworths lease expires and they'll be vacating the existing supermarket that forms a heart of Neutral Bay currently. Coles have two options. One is to repurpose the existing building as it is, which will leave us with a, a poor loading dock solution and a building that is actually at the end of its useful life. The second option is to propose to develop the site and deliver a new town plaza, an integrated community car park and a world-class supermarket. It has long been a strategic objective of this council to deliver a new heart for Neutral Bay and this is a chance to bring this vision to life. This is the first step. So to summarise, providing Coles owner's consent will provide us the opportunity to further explore the design and delivery possibilities of the plaza proposal with the community. We want to preserve the village feel and develop a world-class shopping centre for Neutral Bay customers and the community. Coles is not being given any favours in being granted this, so the rescission motion should be, I believe, rejected. The same you. opportunity... That's your three minutes. Is it, if I may, the same opportunity is available to any other interested proponent. They can make an application on the same basis. So... To close, I would just like to say that we support that the rescission is not carried and that we would love to get on with trying to develop a proposal that both you and the community will be proud of. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions from the speakers? So, Councillor Lepourous, do you have a question? Yes. Hi, Timothy. No. Hi. Um, I just wanted to ask, do you have any idea on how many parking spaces you would be able to build on your property? on our property yep. alone. Yep. Yeah, according to the LEP. Have you guys got a figure in mind or...? Uh, we haven't got a... F well, it's much reduced. Uh, the number is approximately 76 on each level inside our land versus okay. the current. So there's currently about 109 car parks on the land. But because we have to integrate the loading facilities and, and ramps, if we are to just build on the Coles land itself, that actually reduces the number of cars that you can provide on each each level. Yeah. Okay, so can, can I follow up? Yes, and on the basis, a reminder for all councillors that it yeah. be direct, succinct and without yes, argument. Yes, so um, you guys kind of need our land so that you can build a bit more parking, correct? In well, order to make well, the... Well, no, we can leave it as it is and we can have 109 cars on our land. Okay, yeah. all right, thank you. You, um, yeah. Councillor Gibbs, do you have a question? Uh, y yes. Um, Mr Atkins, um, do you acknowledge that remove at, at, at the moment we have a group of small businesses surrounding the car park um, and they've, I'd have to say they've been some of the most successful businesses <coughs> in the municipality. Do you, do you acknowledge that by removing that at grade parking that exists there at the moment, um, it would be detrimental to those small businesses. Yes, we do acknowledge yep. that. We have a letter here that we received from the Neutral Bay um, Chamber of Commerce in February 2021. And Neutral Bay Chamber of Commerce have made that very clear to us, that part of this has to be a consideration of them being able to trade and us being able to stage car parking during the development to preserve their right to trade. And we acknowledge that that is part of the consideration that Council will be reviewing and determining in the future 
once we have so, developed so, this proposal. Yeah, the question was the at-grade parking. I, I, I think it needs to be acknowledged that the at-grade parking is of huge benefit to those businesses, not underground Cal parking. Councillor Gibson, you asked and that was answered. Are there okay, any other I, questions? May I respond? Yes. Yes, the at-grade parking is important to those traders and this is a balance that, and this is why we have to have the community consultation because there is a balance between what the traders want and what other people in the community want in the form of the town plaza. So there needs to be this debate and it needs to be had maturely and with evidence in order to define what the right outcome is for the community at the end of the day. It may be reduced parking, it may be improved access, and at the end of the day, if we're successful, there will be more cars for Neutral Bay customers in this precinct than what is there today. I'll just have another quick question. Don't, don't you think it's a better process if we consult the community first, then you lodge the DA after you've listened to what the community wants? I don't, yeah, and I do think that. And that is why we're currently consulting with the community now. We it's, have... There's no wide consultant that you haven't... Well, we, Sorry, Councillor Gibson, you asked a question and allow the speaker to answer it. Councillor Gibson, you've already asked the question and allow the speaker to speak. Have we door knocked the businesses now? Have we had um, discussions with traders in the area? Have we had letters from the Chamber of Commerce? Have those things been made clear to us over the last two years? Yes, they have. We've also been having discussions with the, from Morn Point, Neutral Bay Progress Association. We've also been having discussions with other stakeholders in the area. And tomorrow we commence um, having discussions with the precinct meeting. So we are consulting before we lodge the DA. Part of this process is seeking your approval so that we can do that with the full knowledge that we can move forward. Thank you, Councillor um, Burke. Uh, Mr Atkins, uh, two quick questions. One, do you see direct lift and related access at the southern end of uh, the underground car park if it goes ahead under Grosvenor Place for the, if you like, the southern uh, businesses? Um, and secondly, uh, the legal advice you had from Allens, could you just very briefly describe what that is? Sure. Can I address the first one first? So, so can you just uh, clarify me for me what you mean about the southern end? Yes, if yeah. you are to build an underground car park at the moment under Grosvenor Place, yeah. um, do you see direct lift, um, et cetera, stair access uh, to the southern end of that uh, plaza so that the businesses along the southern end have direct access from sure. the car park? Uh, we don't preclude that from happening. Uh, there are, uh, again, different members of the community who value that access on the southern side. There are other members who see that as a potential blight on the actual formulation of the public realm of the plaza. So, again, I think this issue needs to be ventilated Personally, I think there should be access on the southern side to allow people to do it, but my personal opinion does not count in this matter. And then sorry, second, second point, was Alan's second point is uh, there is uh, the advice from Alan's relates to this confusion about what was granted last week. And what was granted is planning law consent is the content of this advice, which only allows for the planning process to proceed. And the second part of this advice is what we call property law consent, which is dealt with separately, which is actually a landowner giving permission to uh, the proponent to actually construct something on the land. They're not mutually inclusive. So the point is that when you give planning law consent it does not mean that you give consent for any construction on your land. It means you give consent for this to, to, to proceed under the Environmental Protection Act. When it comes to building on the land, you need further consent 
from that landowner in order to facilitate any construction. And so by what by council adopting the motion it did last week, it is just one part of that, which is the planning law consent, and it in no way uh, endorses nor approves any construction on council land whatsoever. And we just wanted to make sure that the community understands that that is the nature of the consent that was provided. Thank you. Um, Councillor Lepouris, another question? Yes, please. Um, last week we spoke about um, putting in a DA is a costly process <laughs> and the chicken and the egg, yeah. right? Um, I just wanted to ask, say that, okay, we understand consent doesn't mean that you guys can just build it. We've given us consent, it's irrevocable, uh, even though some councillors said that we can take it back whenever we want, we can't. Once we give it, you got it. My question is, say that you proceed, you put in the DA, it's a costly process, you spend all the money, and then we say, sorry, you can't build this, we don't like it. What does that leave, where does that leave us? Would you, would Coles be open to looking at legal recourse against council? No. That's my question. Thank you, <laughs> councillor. Mr. So, so the answer to that is that is a risk we're prepared to take. So we, we are turn not off looking, your microphone. Oh, sorry. We're not looking for recourse on the expenditure to pursue this. It's a risk we're prepared to take. And it's uh, if we get to the end of this process, and as I said, there are a number of approvals that will be required. There's a voluntary planning agreement that has to be entered into. That has to go to public exhibition. So there are... There are so many opportunities that it's mind-boggling how this could be stopped in the future. And that's a risk that Coles is prepared to take because it's backing the concept that we can come up with a proposal that not only you, but the community will accept as a reasonable exchange for getting the benefits that we're proposing. So in regards to that... Uh, sorry, sorry. Councillor Lepouris, you have another question, do you? If, if you're... Following up. Succinct, direct and without argument. Okay. So if, if Coles is willing to take that risk, why wouldn't Coles take that risk without owner's consent and, and take the risk, put in a DA on your land, potentially show us what plans you have for the rest of the, the car park and the plaza, and then we can make a decision on that? That's a, that's a really good question. <laughs> we may be forced to do so. If you rescind this, that may be a decision that has to be made. But at this point in time, we've been working with council and the community for two years to get this forward. And all the best advice is to put this before council at an early stage in the process, because if council do not want to see this proposal go forward, then what is the point in doing anything? What I'm seeing is that on balance, last week council decided that it was worthwhile trying to see whether the benefits of this proposal would outweigh any problems that it would cause. And Coles is going into this with open eyes. They understand that we have to satisfy those traders' requirements. We understand clearly Coles have been uh, advised of what the Chamber of Commerce's requirements are. So all of these things have been factored into coming to this chamber and asking for your endorsement so that we can continue to prosecute the opportunity. Thank you, Thank you for your participation. Um, the next registered speaker is Dimitri Janakis. If you would come forward, please. And again, your name, address and who you represent. Um, my name is Dimitri Janakis. <laughs> Nearly lost it. I'm uh, 180 Military Road, Neutral Bay. Um, I'm a third generation owner of Blue and White Dry Cleaners, a local resident and a member of the Chamber of Commerce. <clears throat> Over the 53 years we've been operating, our, fa our family has seen the evolution of Neutral Bay. One of the key turning points was when the landowners on our side of the car park sold a large portion of their land to council for a bargain in order to create the community car park to benefit all the small businesses. This is the main reason what we have today works. From, from dawn to the late hours of the night, families are working long hours, dedicating their life to give Neutral Bay residents the best possible experience. It blows my mind that we are putting the future of Neutral Bay in the hands of a supermarket giant that hasn't spent one day serving the community of the village. 
Why are we rushing this? What is the point of the planning study? There is no doubt that the car park needs to evolve, but, but we have an opportunity to do something amazing without losing the soul of Neutral Bay, the small businesses. Mm -hmm. Successful long-term and generational businesses are draw cards for the area. Olympus Sports, Mr. Gordon, Cosmos Florists, Chaos Cafe, Inform Pharmacy, Priceline by Ivan Lulik and Chargo Charlie's have been here forever, just to name a few. A three-year excavation on our public land will destroy us to create more parking for a supermarket. How will the businesses be compensated with the existing leases, loss of trade and jobs? There is no reason why we can't compromise and have, have your plaza as well as on-grade parking um, for all the small businesses to survive. We have conduct conducted a petition with over 1,100 signatures in three days. As far as we're concerned, the community has spoken. Let's not rush this. Let's do something for everybody and keep, and keep the crown jewel of Neutral Bay the best place to shop on the lower, lower North Shore. Let's just get it right. Thank you. Are there any questions at this stage? Uh, Councillor yes. Gibson. Yeah. So you've you've got so you've started a petition yeah. and all uh, who all of the shopkeepers. Um, all, all all of the um, our goal was just to make people aware yeah. and all the small businesses that that rely on that car park <clears throat> were happy to get involved. We've got a whole heap here of um, you know written petitions as well as an online one going. Okay. So 1,100 in yeah, three days. At the moment, yeah. That's great. Wow. Councillor, Councillor Burke. Um, thank you, Mr. Janakis. Just a couple of quick questions. So you're renting in that? No, we're, we're, the, we're the owners of the property. You're, you're the owners. Great. Yeah. Um, do you have any intention to redevelop? Well, not, not at the moment, no. There, there's, there's never been any consideration by our family to redevelop it right. as it is. There, with the previous planning study, there was talk, yep. you know, as a, as a, um, a, a landowners to, to go down that path, but that was revoked. And at the moment, we, we just run a, a small business and that's our only intention. We have no intention in the, in the future. Uh, fantastic. If I can just ask one more, Mayor. So, um, yes, that was my understanding in the last as well, yeah. uh, that there was some intention to redevelop. And yeah. what, if, if it did happen... Um, in the new planning study and there was an opportunity to upscale significantly. Um, would there be a redevelopment, do you think, and what would happen to the small businesses in the area at that point? Well, look, it's, it's something that we'd have to consider with my family. Yeah. I wouldn't say we're in a financial position to, to do something like that at our yeah. own, on our own. The only way it would be viable is if the other landowners, we got together and, and thought of a way to make Neutral Bay better, but it's not something we're considering at the moment. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Councillor Spensley. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, can you maybe just go into detail what are the 1,100 people actually petitioning for? Like, the, like is it to not develop it, to not have Coles develop it, to do the, something, don't do something? A, a, a lot of the, the, the... They would like the small businesses to have a voice. We, we are so reliant on that car park and the whole idea behind this, this position was just to get community support and just make them aware that if there was a big excavation site in front of all of our small businesses, we, we'd have no way to operate. And even if there was three or two levels of underground parking, we're also reliant on vans, deliveries, you name it, and it just wouldn't work. We wouldn't be able to load up, put it in a lift like you suggested and, and, and bring, it's just not possible. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your participation. Uh, the next next registered speaker. Could the speaker, could we um, have the petition um, delivered the, to count? Uh, have you got copies of all that? Um, most of them. I was getting them up until we we're at the front here, so I can make copies. Well, of half should of we all. receive the petition at this stage? Um, are you wishing to give us that 
that or do you wish to retain it and, and um, provide it to council at look, another time? I would rather retain it and you make sure we've got copies you. of all okay. of them. And, and then and then then I if, if, you, if you submit it to council, it will be yeah. recirculated to councillors. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next speaker is Cosmo Nati. If you could come forward and give your name, address and who you represent. Good evening, Mayor and Councillors. My name is Cosmo Nati. I'm at 182, the rear of Military Road, Neutral Bay. My business is Cosmos Florist. We have been trading in Neutral Bay since 1988. 35 years. We are next to the blue and white dry cleaners. As you enter our store, you are surrounded by lush plants, water features. The public love the tranquil feel. It's unique. We've survived that long because we have established an amazing and loyal customer base over 35 years. Customers come from everywhere when they need quality flower designs, weddings, events. We specialise in indoor and outdoor plants and landscape design as well. All our customers come from all around. We're open seven days a week. Parking is crucial, not only for my business, for all the small businesses surrounded by me. Loading zones as well. How do we receive stock? How do our couriers get in and out? There are over 100 small family businesses in Neutral Bay Village that have been operating for many years, creating jobs for people. People are working seven days a week just to make a living, to keep their doors open. Where else can you park your car on a ground level and have access to a variety of stores, such as a liquor store, the butcher, Dimmick's Books, a fish store, Baker's Delight, an alteration shop, the patisserie shops, we have an abundance of cafes. We have Mr. Gordon's. We have gift stores. We have so many stores there that are all hiding in amongst everyone. My concerns are the demolition site for two to three years. Will customers, where will customers park? How will they get access to all our stores? Will we, will, you know, we all have leases in place for you know, four to five years. Who's going to pay our leases? Well, there'll be no public access to anywhere. So we need to be heard and the public are really concerned as well as all the small businesses are concerned. Yeah. Um, I'm there, I've been here for 35 years. There are lots of businesses that have been there for you know, 10, 15, longer than what I've been there for. And that's why we provide a, a village atmosphere. So putting a car park underneath, you know, what's going to happen? Will there be access for us, for us at the southern side to get customers through? I don't think so. I think once they park underneath and they go straight to Coles, Coles will have, probably by then in two, three years' time, they'll have a pharmacy. They'll always, they already have, Woolworths has flowers now, they'll probably upgrade their, their flowers, they'll have their dry cleaners. They'll have lots more variety in their store. So to get people up to another level, I don't think it's gonna work. Well, that's my thought anyway. So I'm just here to have my say and see what you think. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions of the speaker? Councillor so, Gibson? Do you think um, the, the council needs to continue with the planning study before we accept any DAs? Totally. Yeah. It needs more time. A lot more time. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Thank you for your participation. Thank you. Next, the next registered speaker is Rick Doran. If you would come forward and give your name, address and who you represent. Good evening. Thank you for the invitation to talk to Council tonight. My name is Rick Doran. I'm the co-president of the Neutral Bay Chamber of Commerce. Our chamber represents commercial and retail landlords and tenants throughout the suburb of Neutral Bay. You've heard of many, from many of them here tonight. Um, many, of these, many of our retailers are outraged that Coles wants to proceed with their proposal. Why is that? Do we really think that we can close down a suburb for three years, two to three years, without any parking, Without, lose, without losing our shops and maintain our integrity as a retail suburb? The answer to that is no. We do need more thinking in the process. 
We need the Neutral Bay Town Planning Study to proceed to, to completion, which is due in, I think, March of next year. Why should Coles be allowed to jump the queue? OK? Council has put this town planning study in place, so why doesn't Council abide by its own rulings? I ask you. We have just heard from Dimitri, who is a long-term tenant, a long-term owner in the area, third generation. They provide an outstanding service. If, if this development proceeds, or if we are not allowed to have some sort of control, his business is decimated. So is Cosmos, the florist. So is Russell, Olympus Sports. Terry from the $2 shop. Okay, these guys have got their lives invested in the, in the uh, council car park area. The council car park area works extremely well. That's what holds our suburb together. It's, it's an eclectic mix of retailers. It works extremely well. Unfortunately, as you broaden out into Neutral Bay, you start to get into, into uh, massage places and nails and gymnasiums. If we have one more gymnasium in the place, we'll all go super fit. Okay, we're, but the council car park is holding the whole place together. Okay, that's the key to Neutral Bay shopping. The key to our hospitality is the Oaks Hotel. We need both of those. If we, if we take the eclectic mix of, of the council car park area out, we lose our integrity. So our members are pretty disappointed. We had a meeting last week. I've never seen so many members turn up. Many of them are here tonight. Okay, it's our community land that we're talking about. It's our intergenerational families that have contributed to the community and made it so special. Coles might have the best proposal going, perhaps, but we don't know. We can't take the risk. Sorry, Mr. Mr. If you were, Mr. Doran, if you would address the councillors, and that's your oh, three my minutes. Apologies, ma that's your three minutes. And that'll do me. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions of Mr. Doran, Councillor what, Gibbs? What, what do you, what, what, do, what do you, what does the chamber? How does the chamber think this council should proceed? What, what should we do? What are you asking councillors well, we to do we, tonight? We want more consultation, councillor, on the matter. We've had none. No. no we had a streetscape meeting on the 29th of February. And on the 29th, on the 14th of February this year, a street state committee, right, with with councillors, with council officers, with members of yeah. the chamber, and this proposal was not put forward. No, that's it was not put no, forward. No, council works with chamber to deliver the infrastructure projects which our members pay for. Yeah. We kick in a quarter of a million dollars a year mm. to mm. fund the projects. So you, weren't, you feel that you haven't been consulted? There's been no consultation. There's been no transparency. That's right. We had a meeting. It was not discussed. I mean, mm. you would think out of courtesy that we would have been told that there's going to be a possibility to allow Coles to develop on our land. That was not discussed. Mm -hmm. But what are these meetings for? Well, that's a good point. And may I say, councillor, our owners have kicked in probably four to five million bucks over the last 20 yeah. years that we've had the streetscape meetings. What respect are we showing them? OK, so what do you expect councillors to do tonight, well, Mr Doran? Well, we can't, we can't allow coals to develop willy-nilly. We don't want a sinkhole or an excavation site there for three years. It's going to kill our retailers. Our uh, shoppers will go elsewhere. End of story. Thank you, Councillor Gibson. Could you turn off your microphone? Councillor Lepouris, do you have a question? Yes, I just wanted to ask in your um, position as Chamber of Commerce, do you think that um, Coles will put the smaller businesses as a priority in their development, or do you think they would probably prioritise? Of course not. They're a publicly listed retail and development company. What interest have they got in us? Thank you. Um, are there any other questions? Thank you for your participation, Mr. Doran. The Thank next you, speaker is Umesh Panta. If you would come forward, please, and give your name and address and who you represent. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Councillors. Uh, I'm Umesh Panta. I'm the I'm from um, number four to eight Waters Road, and I'm speaking on behalf of Chargill Charlies and my landlord. I really want you to feel that 
the landlords are your grandparents. I spoke to her and shared the news from last Monday and said, this is what's happening in New Talbe, what do we do? She is the wonderful person, million generation New Talbe person that she has um, struggles, committed to the, the cause of the society. She has, on the same week when I called her, that her husband is gone to the nursing home at age 70, unfortunately with dementia. That is the only, the rent that I, we pay is the only source of income and he's on a high care. Income is tested, asset is tested, I'm a financial planner by trade. I think I don't want to go into the depth of that. The loss for that elderly people who deserve dignity is now in, in threat. Me, myself, and my wife, we, we thought we sold our family home 12 years ago and put the entire amount on Chagil Charlie's so that my wife could manage to look after the kids. We sold a fully paid house. Now what we have done is we simply managed to clear the debts finally, and we have put a deposit for our family home, that will be lost. Without the car park, the business will be gone forever. With my passion on sports, my son is a New South Wales swimmer. He plays for North Sydney Soccer. We are the major sponsor at a small, tiny shop for Mosfin Rugby, North the Basketball, and North Sydney Football Club. Selling chicken and chips. We have passion for the community. We are making significant contribution. I stood up on Saturday, and I worked there five o'clock in the morning. John and the councillor knows about me. And I go to my day job, and go to work in the evening as well. That will be lost. And my son hopefully will be a, a national swimmer. We is a New South Wales swimmer now, he's 15 probably can't afford to swim anymore. That's the impact on one side of the, the corner on the elderly and the dignity that we need to probably consider. And I think we as councillors have responsibility to think about those impactful stories, passionate about that's what we represent for, for our community. And we need to look at the consequence and have a trade-off. A trade-off between a corporate giant versus 70 plus local businesses going out pretty much in one go. Without that car park, without access to that, no business will survive there. Gone. So if that's what we are there for, I really humbly request the councillors to make your conscience and think about my landlord as your grandparents and what would you have done if that would have been the impact of your grandparents. If I am the fam part of your family member, which I think I am, I left Homebush Strathfield Council to come here and I am the chairperson of Nepalese community, advisory chairperson, where there are 200 different organizations, and I was the president before. And I've done everything passionately to serve the community. I believe in diversity. That's why I moved to North Sydney and North Sydney Council. That's you I hope three minutes. I hope, please, respect. Let's have a balanced trade of conversation. Let's have engagements as every rightfully three generations of other small business employees and there will be loss of pretty much about 20,000 plus job impacted on, on all around. I employ 20 people. Thank you, that's your three minutes. So there any please make all of those things in your consent before you make your decisions. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, the next registered speaker is Russell Ekas. your address and who you represent. Uh, councillors. Uh, my name is Russell Ekes and I'm the owner of Olympus Sports at Neutral Bay. Um, by way of background, um, we have been in Neutral Bay now for 35 years. We um, arrived in 1988. Um, we have traded between the Big Bear and down to the Grove Arcade where we've been for the past 24 years. Um, our business is basically supplying uh, sports equipment and athletic footwear. To my knowledge, we're the only supplier of um, equipment hardware in the lower North Shore during this whole time. Um, we've employed many hundreds of casual 
and permanent staff. We're heavily involved um, in local club sponsorships with the rugby, soccer, AFL, netball, both of the associations and the clubs. Uh, we have been and are currently the destination for the club uniform pickups, which means many thousands of families over the years have picked up their uniforms uh, from us, and we mostly do this as a free of charge service. Um, we've developed strong customer relationships over the many years. Now, most people prefer to shop local and support local business if at all possible. And we've been very aware of this, and to make this happen, we actually pride ourselves um, in that we've, uh, we have better ranges, we're very price competitive, and our, our staff are more knowledgeable than our major competitor. I guess that's enough about us. Um, very recently, we've been advised about the application to lodge a DA that it had been approved, which include the closure of the car park for two years. Um, now, being Australia, that's probably going to be four years. Um, this will devastate more than uh, 100 local uh, businesses in the close proximity. There's 20 shops alone in the Grove Arcade. Now, Young Street has been closed to parking, been replaced with a shipping container and some artificial grass. Nobody can park there at all. Military Road in front has um, the Blue Line bus stop, um, now has zero parking. And um, the open air car park is the only reason, as us as shop owners, can continue to exist. None of us retailers can survive without this car park. Customers will be forced to shop in the malls, many probably never to return after buying habits that have been changed for so many years. Um, we all have leases, uh, leases with no customers once the hoardings go up. Um, there's been no mention whatsoever about compensation for us um, in the surrounding businesses. The outcome here is basically too horrific for us to even comp contemplate. Well, personally, I'll be 74 next year after running a business for over 50 years, and I'll be trying to stave off bankruptcy instead of spending time with my 11 grandchildren through no fault of mine. Um, we all have been unwantingly put into a position where we have to fight to save our livelihood for our families. And just some interesting feedback. I've never seen so much outrage from customers over the past few days after hearing about the proposal. And they all had the same question. Who's supporting this on the council? Now, I believe we need more time to come up with an alternative proposal, which is fair, um, there, where there's only not one winner at the expense of literally hundreds of hard-working businesses who continue to support the community and have been doing so for many years, employing hundreds of people and supporting their families. Personally, I'm not against development of the area, just to have a fair outcome uh, for us during the process. Thank you. Yeah. Are there any questions of the speaker? No, thank so, you. Sorry, Councillor Gibson, you have a question. Um, so we heard from uh, the Speaker on behalf of Coles that Coles have been busily consulting with the community. Did they come into your shop and ask your opinion? No, nothing. No, so you, had, you, have, you hadn't heard anything? I haven't heard anything no. until very no. recently. No, no, good. Thank, thank you. <clears throat> thank you for your participation. Sorry. Uh, sorry, Councillor uh, Burke, my apologies. Um, Mr Caritas, thank you Ekes, very much. Yeah. So, no, Sorry, yeah, Mr. Eka, sorry, I've jumped the queue there. Um, apologies. Um, so I've shopped in your shop a number of times. I can vouch for it being a fantastic community facility, more than a shop. Uh, it is an institution, effectively, in our community. So um, thank you for your, uh, um, what, your, your service that you offer to our community. You. Um, in the, sorry. Mayor, um, in the uh, in the instance that there was to be the redevelopment, as proposed 12, 18 months ago, of that strip, what were your plans in, in, at that point? 
What, not knowing that there was to be a development? or um, you, you may be aware that the previous planning study showed uh, major development proposals of yeah. that strip. Um, were you, if you were aware of that, what, what plans did you have for your well, my shop understanding going was forward? That the previous council election it got voted 11 1 against the development and it was to be shelved. If I, if I can just clarify the question though, yeah. it, um, 18 months ago it looked as though that was going ahead, broadly speaking. Um, did you have plans um, for your shop at that point? Um, in that well, contingency? Well, I wasn't aware that it was going ahead at that stage. Okay. And that um, we, in fact, signed a new five and a half year lease uh, a year ago, um, which um, is not putting us in a really flash position at the moment. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you for your participation. Okay. Thank you. The next registered speaker is Cathy Peters. If you'd come forward and give your name, address, and who you represent. Good evening, councillors. Um, my name's Cathy Peters and I'm the secretary of the Neutral Precinct I, and I'm also a resident of Yo Street in Neutral Bay. The uh, Neutral um, Precinct office bearers do not support the rescission motion on the issue of owner's consent to Coles' development of the Grosvenor Lane car park. As some of the previous speakers have said, they haven't been consulted. Well, the precincts have reached out to Coles and Coles has accepted an invitation to three precincts this week, one, out, one night after another, to present their proposal both for the supermarket site and the Grosvenor Lane car park. And it's commencing with neutral precinct tomorrow night and everyone's welcome to come. If this rescission motion is passed, then unfortunately uh, Coles are unlikely to attend. I ask the question of councillors, how often does the community get to influence a proposal before a DA is submitted? Please don't deny um, the residents the opportunity. Let's face it, council does not have the financial resources to provide Neutral Bay with a plaza. So why would you frustrate an offer to provide this through public benefit arrangements? We know that Council's decision on the 26th of April did not transfer public land to Coles, but it gave permission required by regulation for Coles to lodge a DA, including a public benefit plaza. However, this should not be an exclusive permission. We heard at the 26th of April Council meeting the General Manager of Arcadia speak very e eloquently wanting the opportunity to present an alternative proposal. The council motion then reflected this. Neutral Precinct views the 26th of April council decision as a, cal a catalyst for someone to build a plaza, not in an alignment with one single developer. The Neutral Bay Town Centre planning consultations have commenced and we welcome actual proposals with public benefit arrangements for this key site to inform the community debate. The community is opposed to overdevelopment of Neutral Bay, however has supported modest development in exchange for a plaza that remains within council control and provides <coughs> excuse me, significant benefits to the community. We are customers of the businesses surrounding the current car park and we would be users of a plaza. It is where we shop and it's where we socialise. But we want to hear what the Coles proposal is. In conclusion, Neutral Precinct does not support the rescission motion, but we look forward to having a consultative approach to planning the Neutral Bay Village to maintain the village character and responsible development. We do not want to be denied the opportunity offered by Coles for us to influence their proposal before they lodge their DA. Thank you. Thank you. That's your three minutes. Councillor Gibson, you have yes, a question? Apple. So you, see, you seem to be saying that if, we don't, if, if the council doesn't 
um, grab this opportunity for coals now, all will be lost. No. But shouldn't shouldn't Sorry. coals? Sorry, Councillor Gibson, um, um, you're, uh, you're, you're quiet. Yeah, you've asked yeah. one. You've got to be direct, succinct, without argument, I'm and you have to allow. I'm, I wish you'd. Uh, I wish you'd have said you have that to, to other councillors who made lengthy <laughs> speeches. I have. I've said it to at least three yeah. others tonight. Thank yeah. you. Um, uh, but it's only me. I'm the only one that no, no, has that's to not, ask a question ca ca really no, quickly. No, you don't. No, that's you just asked a me. question and the uh, speaker sought to answer it. Would you answer the question? Uh, no, we don't think it's lost. We just think it's a wonderful opportunity to be able to listen to the proposal, influence what it looks like, influence what Coles are going to do, bring up all these questions that the speakers tonight have raised about the car park, about other aspects of the proposal, before they actually lodge the DA. And that's our understanding that what Council's decision on the 26th of April is allowing us to do. Let's sit down with Coles, let's understand what they want to do before we put it down, mm. or before we you know, say it's no good. Okay, do, do, another question. Should councillors just ignore all the small business people and residents who've come here tonight and saying they don't want this to proceed now? They, they, want, to, they want us to do the planning study first. Um, should councillors ignore the fact that there's been 1,100 signatures on a petition in three days? Should we just ignore that and, and go with the... Um, the mega supermarket chain Coles um, to, you know, to let them progress their idea first? Is, I, can't, is I can't speak for councillors. You have to make your own decision. What I'm saying is let the community, including the business holders, listen to what Coles are proposing before they actually come the, to you with the, the DA. Yeah. They've just said Thank they don't stop, want to Sorry, can't, don't Well, want Councillor to Gibson, that's a matter for the debate and not to... Um, debate with the speaker. Thank, are there any other questions of the speaker? Thank you very much for your the question. Um, how many people were at the meeting where you decided this the other night? We haven't had a, a present meeting between the 26th of April and today. That's why I said I'm speaking on behalf of the office bearers of the neutral precinct. So you're not speaking on behalf of the precinct because you don't well, know what those Sorry, Councillor Gibson. Oh, no, Councillor Gibson. Councillor Gibson, you were required to show respect to everybody here, including no, the speaker. It doing. was asked and answered, and it was made very clear when Ms. Peters addressed us to begin with that she was speaking on behalf of office bearers of the precinct. So that thank okay. you. Could could but you just tell have, me who we those? Have set, well, the two office bearers, the two conveners, Mr. Glenn Cura and Ms. Effie Carr. Um, as co-conveners and myself as secretary. Sunday. Okay. Sunday. But we have been debating this issue with, in uh, precinct meetings over the last four years. So I think we have a very sound understanding of the um, community of the neutral precinct. But, yeah, I just wanted to broad. confirm you're speaking on behalf of the... I am. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, for, uh, you two for your participation. The next registered speaker is Greg... Caritas. Again, your name, address, and who My you represent. Um, it, we, we, it, we have to have a motion in order to do that. So if you just sit down first and give your name, address, and who. You, well, Councillor Gibson, would you wait? Uh, your name, address, and, your, and who you represent. Uh, it's Greg Caritas from Arcadia. And I understand you have some material you would like to distribute to councillors. May help. Thank you. Is there a motion to accept? Thank you, Councillor Spensley. Seconded by Councillor Lapurus. All those in favour? That's carried. Um, Mr Curry will distribute and you may proceed to address Council. Yeah, I didn't realise this. So, uh, we've listened. Uh, Ms Peters uh, said we should have this new process, but we've actually got a process. It's called a, a planning study. We had a previous planning study that was rescinded. I'm a little uh, confused why all of a sudden we're listening to one party. This has been described as a unique opportunity. Uh, the question is, why is it a unique opportunity? Because Coles has purchased the supermarket from another opera, uh, the, as a landlord of another operator. The expiry of the Woolworths lease, they aren't leaving, they're being thrown out. That's not the, the creation of the opportunity. The opportunity is to put a planning together and look at how a, 
a plaza could serve the community, the small businesses, and, and bring a whole, um, whole community together as a plaza. That, that comes about by good design. This design has not been developed by what works for the community, what brings uh, uh, small businesses, about how it will uh, 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 connect with military road and public transport, uh, or natural life. Uh, we've told we've got an LEP that actually uh, is the governing um, basis, but on the plans that Coles have put forward or the, as attached to the motion, there's no setbacks from Cooper's Lane, Waters Lane or Grosvenor Lane. In fact, we just argued about car spots coming off a uh, uh, some in the previous rescission. There's 18 car spots coming off Grosvenor Street. On Grosvenor Street, why is Coles getting not only the right to do on public land, but they've got a DA, as you've indicated, on Cooper's Lane, Waters Lane, Grosvenor Lane, the whole of the car park, including our footpaths. It, including our footpaths. It goes up to our footpaths. Why do they need that? It doesn't make sense. And Grosvenor Street. It's going over the car spots of Grosvenor Street. Your plan is per your attachment to the, this motion that was has been asked to be rescinded. Coles just said to you, what, what, what is the urgency? What is unique about this? We have a study. Can they not wait another 12 months like every other developer? Developers around the country are impeded by Council's requirements for further information. Why cannot Coles, in this, in this example, wait for you to finish your planning study? A period of 12 months. The lease doesn't end until the end of next year. That is the normal risk of being a developer. You were asked a he was asked a question, Tim was asked a question, how many car spots will you have in total? He said, we'll be reduced from 108 to 75 on each level. But there is only one level at the moment. So there's 108 or 113 car spots, depending on which you want to believe, going to 150. Under the LEP, four per 100. That is fully um, servicing their obligation, the maximum LEP under your guidelines as a, as a supermarket. So. He said, what would happen if he, he uh, didn't get this tonight? He said, well, we might just still go ahead and do, as John asked him, a DA on our site and give it a, a scheme over the car park. Why can't he do that? Why is the supermarket leading the scheme? The way it integrates with small businesses, what level it is, what natural light it is, where the plaza is located, and why isn't half the car spots being maintained on Grosvenor Lane as requested? We can get a very large plaza on one half of this, which is the southern side, which, believe it or not, faces the north, gives you the most light, as per the previous study and our, our future direction paper that was rescinded. This is not a unique opportunity lost. We cannot reverse this once it's developed, like Young Street is being reversed now because we rushed it. We need to get this right. Like the Woolworths supermarket at um, Crow's Nest Car Park, the Coles there, Coles is not the owner of the supermarket in Crowsness. They sold that development off. You're not dealing with someone that's putting a DA in that's going to be the end owner. This will be leased for 60 or 80 years as per previous supermarkets. And they will not be here to live with their consequences. They aren't doing Mr. this for Mr. free. Mr Credis, you're well over the three minutes. If you would conclude um, your statements. Coles Thank will you. not be the landowner. They will sell this site off as, as, uh, once it's either completed or DA approved. Why are we rushing in letting them dictate the future of Neutral Bay? Why don't we keep them compliant to the current LEP? What is the rush? We are willing to participate in the plan and we are willing to fund significantly the future plaza commitments. We can keep the car spots to 30 car spots, which is 15 over two levels, if they keep to the previous agreed uh, construction line on Grosvenor Lane. That may, gives you the 30 car spots that we will lose on plaza. We do not need to de uh, decimate the whole car park to create, achieve a plaza. Thank it's you. what's you underneath that's causing the five problems. Minutes. Thank you. I understand you have a question for the speaker, Councillor Gibson. Um, light on for another reason. No, I just I did have a question. Um, so it was your understanding that you, you were told by council staff to not put anything in now because to wait until the planning study um, ha has at least commenced. 
There was is, is that right? Yes, there was significant concern after the yeah. decision of the previous LEP uh, planning study that Coles would proceed with the DA, uh, despite the fact that the planning study won't uh, and the current planning study doesn't meet their timelines. So, do you think um, it is? Do you think it would be fair to say the council would be showing favouritism towards Coles by letting them Sorry, that's not progress? That's an appropriate question. And um, again, you're okay. trying to um, impute improper motives. So that's 1511 of the clause, and I'm ruling oh, that question okay. out of order. Thank we you. don't have to keep quoting the have numbers. You, have you got okay, another yep, question? I, I do have another question. Um, is it your understanding that the that the building that Cole, Coles is proposing is fully compliant? No, the uh, the building doesn't look compliant by the plan. Sorry, I'm, I'm just going to say, um, Miss, it's in your opinion, Mr. Creed, is you're okay. not a, an assessment let me development be, assessment officer. Let me officer. be more exact. Then it isn't compliant because there is no setback on the on the uh, lanes, and it's got five stories, uh, which is over the height limit because the supermarket is four or five metres, and that's shown off Grosvenor Lane, not Grosvenor Street. Um, and there's a third element, um, setback height and car parking numbers. And also there, there will likely be, through the scheme that's been presented to you, um, a loading bay built or accessed via cancelled property on third level. So we've talked about not selling uh, land to uh, private businesses mm. for their benefits, such as a school. Except this isn't being sold. That was corrected last week. It's not being given. That they've been granted accesses to that that uh, that land to serve their own logistical problems. Where we have an ability for the community, and this is what the study should provide. We should be looking at how we uh, make sure that the loading happens underground and future driveways are eliminated and connected underneath the plaza. What easements have uh, been demanded of, of the, the current land if the only access to this subterranean car park is through the Coles driveway? We need to look at how future properties and landlords, such as uh, Council's own community centre or Dimitri's land, can have connectivity subterranean rather than having driveways that exist today and having traffic pedestrian conflict uh, via deliveries and, and, and cars. There are things that would be put in that study that would be principles. It's a principles document that we're asking you to look to develop on what we need to. That's what was developed under the previous planning studies. And we have a, um, a, a, a construction line that was mutually agreed by Coles and the other landlords, which is reflected by small businesses, that would mini minimise the disruption to small businesses if the construction line was maintained and held to Grosvenor Lane. Grosvenor Street, Grosvenor Lane. Thank you, Councillor Porus. Do you have a question as a yes, speaker? Yes, uh, sorry. Mr Carides, um, if, if, um, if Coles was to build uh, 150 odd parking spots under their property and then uh, were permitted to also build more parking under the, uh, the plaza, the proposed plaza, do you think there'd be issues of congestion in the area, given that the area is quite tight already as it is? I mean, have you guys looked at that, tra like traffic in, in regards to traffic and what that would cause to the area? There's been traffic studies done by council, which um, we've got copies of, and I think actually provided to us by Coles. Uh, and and the, 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 the unusual thing, there seems to be a limitation on car numbers to, uh, to mitigate uh, traffic and congestion, and that was the concern. And, and that's why uh, previously uh, the study required access to the car park via Coopers and Loading, where this proposal has it off Grosvenor Street. Uh, but the congestion caused by the significant additional car spots of maybe 150 on ca uh, council land uh, is also then going to limit the rights of future land landowners to probably even comply with their own car parking because of the impact of traffic uh, in their developments. Thank you. Are there any other questions of the speaker? Thank you for your participation. The next registered speaker is Rick O'Connell. If you would come forward and give your name, address and who you represent. Thank you, Mayor Baker and fellow councillors uh, for listening to me again. Um, I just wanted to sort of kick off with, oh, my name's Rick O'Connell, I'm the CEO of Arcadia, I apologise. 
Um, I just thought I'd reiterate one of Tim's comments. Um, I do agree that the owner's consent is the start of a new process and that's that ultimately what it is what it is. The issue with that is why start a new process when your own process hasn't finished? Uh, that is what completely blindsides us. Um, why start a process and allow that to occur when it's your sole choice to do so when your own planning study is not complete? You don't know the parameters that help the local village. You don't know how to save the local businesses. You don't know what the community wants because your own planning study is not complete. Commencing a new study or a new process, as Tim calls it, is council's choice. You're electing to do that, ultimately. <clears throat> Tim also said at the time that he previously spoke that there's 76 car spaces available on their own land for each level. That ultimately gives them above the maximum cap allowed in the DCP. What is the motivation for Coles? Let's consider that. It's really to break the DCP number. Why else are they doing it? They're saying that they'll lodge a complying scheme. So they're getting no advantage that way from council. What is it they ultimately want to do? They want to expand their car park over 144 car spaces, dressed up as a council car park, dressed up as a local community plaza. You're choosing to do this. That's what you're choosing. You're kicking off a process when your own process isn't even done. It makes no sense whatsoever. I would like you to consider that. I'd like you to also consider that the town centre planning study is a robust way of understanding community need. The other thing I'd like you to consider is that other developers around, such as ourselves, don't actually know what to build because we're waiting for what the community wants. We're waiting for what the planning study ultimately shows. We're waiting for the new controls that this council will decide and should decide based on the appropriateness for how you keep the village a village, what height it should ultimately be, how it should function and how it should serve the community. Starting a new process before your own process is done is just frankly the wrong thing to do. You've heard from the, the locals, you're not going to miss an opportunity. Last time we were here, I heard the catch cry of it's a once in a lifetime opportunity, it is. And if we stuff it up, it's there for the next 80 years. Why wouldn't you take the time? There's no rush. Poles will always be there. They can rebadge and they'll develop later. They can develop their own land right now and they can have the car parking that they're allowed. They can have a new supermarket. They can have three stories of residential on top of that, not four. Thank you, that's your three minutes. Are there any questions of the speaker? So, um, you delayed, Arcadia delayed um, progressing plans because um, council officers were saying to you, please wait until the planning study has been completed. Is that, that's correct. We, yeah. uh, under the FD paper, it was allowable to 12 storeys. Um, we spoke to uh, the council officers um, they had said to us there'll be a new process. Um, there'll likely be um, some change to height and development uh, within the precinct, but they'd need to do an, a planning study to do that. There's no point in us progressing something if we don't know what the rules of engagement are and what ultimately the community wants and the council wants. If you want us to, we're happy to, as we said. Um, we'll be lodging something that no one's had a robust conversation no. around, which is ultimately what you should do in planning study. We know that things are going to change in Neutral Bay. Um, we, we would rather forward fund a plaza on ground as it is with no basement and have that as a future VPA than council think that it has zero options and build a basement for coals. We would rather do that. There are, so there are other options besides the one coals is... Um, presenting to us in a hurry. Correct. We just haven't heard them all yet, yeah. Correct. Th thank because you. Are there any other questions of the speaker? Councillor Welsh. Um, if Arcadia decides to go with a, some kind of d development, how will they support the um, small businesses that, that are in that, that will be affected by that development? We, we'd involve them in the process. So ultimately, um, 
we either stay as we are and we forward fund a plaza and the plaza stays there and we'll deal with the logis logistics as we presented to council in the council briefing, I think earlier in, in it was when I first just joined Arcadia, so it would have been in, in May, June of last year. In terms of an overall proposal, if, if it's a large scale development, we involve all the retailers in that decision making in terms of how you provide continuity of trade, how you move retailers through um, the different cycles of development because we have the capacity to do so. Um, so in terms of that, you're also up for when you're a landlord, um, as we are, you have to pay retailers compensation as well. So it, the mechanisms of that are very, very different um, to being outside of that ecosystem. We're for the retailers, we're not against the retailers and we wouldn't do something. And certainly that's, Neutral Bay is not for the Caritas family about making money. Neutral Bay is about their legacy, ultimately. Thank you, Councillor Burke. Um, thanks, Mr O'Connell. Um, quick question about um, uh, the, the, the car park versus plaza thing. It sounds as if you're in favour of a plaza being there. Is that correct? Um, in terms of, it, we know that ultimately council wants a plaza and the community wants a plaza and we feel for the retailers in terms of the amount of on-grade parking. I think in terms of our consultation with them, what you have before you, um, is a way of having a plaza with some on-grade parking, which is some, is, is, is some way to go to trying to come to some medium ground. Um, in terms of digging an entire basement and going down a number of holes, like a huge hole in excavation, we're, we're not for that in terms of that significant disruption for over two to three years. If you, and again, it's demonstrated in those uh, printouts that Greg had provided you, if Coles' is basement, if they want to ultimately get more parking than what they have, if they come to Grosvenor Lane, um, and even a little bit further than that in terms of the first row of cars that's currently there, um, I've got a 20 year career in, in development. Um, so I would say to you that we could keep the other side uh, the southern side on grade parking open and the service road open through construction as an example uh, which we've demonstrated there on aerial plans and Coles can have their basement they can then put a plaza back and we have on grade parking which I've, I've shown you there in those plans as well those plans were actually agreed by all of the stakeholders uh, and Coles at the time of the last uh, future directions paper um, the concern we have is, um, as Tim would say, that coals are going into it eyes wide open, but I would say they're going is very much shut. And that's demonstrated by the line that's actually provided on the motion that was approved where the basement extent is. So the basement extent line, which is the red dotted line uh, on your plan of, of the motion that was approved, actually goes over that second row of cars, leave, leaving only a service lane and a pedestrian path for the southern village retailers. So that in itself, they can now rely upon it. And that in itself is actually a reason to rescind the motion. The other thing, um, Councillor Porus asked Tim as to Coles taking action uh, in the future if there was to be ultimately a disagreement. Uh, Tim didn't answer that question. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Thank you for your participation. The final registered speaker this evening is Meredith Trevelyan Jones. If you would come forward and give your name, address, and who you represent. Uh, thank you, Mayor and, <coughs> and Councillors. Uh, my name is Meredith Trevelyan Jones. I'm a resident of Camorne, and I'm here tonight to represent the Neutral Bay and Camorne Progress Association and also Willoughby Bay Precinct. Right now, the stars are aligning to potentially allow the creation of a new open space in the heart of Neutral Bay. Councillors support the idea of a plaza. Council's development control plan promotes the idea. Community consultation in the past has indicated support for better public spaces. Two key property owners have expressed interest in progressing the idea and are both committed to a long-term presence in Neutral Bay. Coles wants to operate a supermarket Arcadia is a long-term property investor. At the last meeting, Councillor Mutton said that Council should not be getting on board the Coles canoe. I agree. Council should not focus on the interests of any one property owner, but 
but on the wider public interest. Coles are proposing an integrated Neutral Bay Town Centre car park accessed from Grosvenor Street. Local residents say to me, that's a great idea. Council may want that car park extended to allow the integration of the retail parking for future development on the southern side of the plaza. A single integrated car park with pedestrian access on both the north side and the south side of the plaza would provide much better access to local shops, just as the original car park, the council car park, did when it was built in the 1960s. Achieving the best outcome requires council to set the markers rather than help paddle someone's canoe. Coles have accepted uh, Willoughby Bay Precinct's invitation to attend a meeting and present their ideas. I understand Coles wants to attend further meetings as the design progresses and wants to attend other precinct meetings and plans broader consultation. I welcome Coles' commitment to community engagement. If Arcadia also presented their ideas to Council and the community, that would be beneficial and would work towards an optimal outcome for Neutral Bay. Council will need to ensure an implementation process that allows landowners to proceed in accordance with their timetables, whilst ensuring public parking and delivery access is maintained at all times. And we've heard that from quite a number of the speakers, the concern about loss of car parking while a hole is built. And I am sure that there can be uh, a stage process to ensure that there is significant parking maintained. Voting for this motion would indicate to Coles that their participation in the redevelopment of the Grosvenor Lane car park is not welcome. I ask Council to vote against the motion and give Coles the confidence to invest in consultation and design and allow Council to explore this public domain opportunity. Momentum is growing and Council should encourage progress rather than stymie it. Thank you. Are there any? Uh, what, excuse me. Are there any questions of the speakers? Yes. Council yes, I have one. So, um, Ms. Prevalon Jones. So you're speaking on behalf of the Neutral Bay Cremorne Progress Association, mm. is and, that right? And Willoughby Bay Precinct also. Okay. Right. So the. Um, can you tell me when the last meeting of the Progress Association was held, and uh, are there minutes from that meeting? that shows that I, I don't know anything about this Progress Association, yep. neither do any of the small businesses in Neutral Bay. Yep. How, how many members are there in it? Um, I don't know what the email list is at the moment. In terms of members who actually attend meetings, it's between 12 and 20 at any given time. There are four office bearers and it was the office bearers that authorised me to speak tonight. All right, so there hasn't been a meeting by the Progress Association for you to that's not how we work. So that, the office bearers are, are, are authorised to act on behalf of the uh, and, and when the was the last meeting held of the Progress Association? Of the when, Pro when was the last meeting held? Um, that would have been in January. Thank you. That's and, asked and answered. So would you okay. have yep, you got another having, question? Uh, yes, I do. Um, Mr Trevellan-Jones, you also sit as a community rep on the local planning panel where this matter would ultimately be heard. Well, sorry, uh, is that no, Councillor, Councillor Gibson, I'm going to move that as out of order. One, if this, any DA of this size will not be going to the local planning panel. It will be going to the Sydney North planning panel, which is a regional panel. So thank you. Have you got oh, any other questions just, on the topic? I just, I just asked a question. You, you sit on the local planning panel as, as a rep. Is, is, is that, is is that it, correct? Is it, are you asking that I'm on, uh, that I'm a yes, community representative? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And would, would you be able to provide to councillors um, minutes from the meetings of the Progress Association? Uh, no, I wouldn't. You wouldn't. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Thank you for your participation. Uh, I have a motion, Mayor. Councillor Gibson. Um, just bear in mind, Councillor Gibson, that the first thing that's before us is the rescission. Yeah. So you move the rescission? Yep. I'm going to speak to why yeah, we should yeah, move yeah, the rescission. I need a seconder. Is there a seconder? Councillor Lepouris. Councillor yeah, Gibson, I'll speak, speak I'll, to the rescission. I'll speak to why we should rescind this. Councillors, we have to be consistent. On the other matter of Parawen Street, we sat here and we listened to the residents um, and we took note that they'd emailed in and they'd made representations. 
We have to be consistent. If we did that once, we're obliged to listen again. We need to rescind this motion and what I what um and, and I have I think I need to state what the motion would be in order to try to convince you to rescind this one. So the motion that I would put forward is that uh, that council accelerate accelerate the um, the current uh, neutral way planning study by giving by allocating extra resources, financial and um, and and staff wise, so that that um, so that that can be so that it can be progressed more quickly. So that's, and then I also, uh, this is unusual, but I'm going to put forward a foreshadowed motion in case this motion doesn't get up. And the foreshadowed motion is, councillors, that this whole process be referred to the Minister for Local Government and to the Office of Local Government. Because what I'm seeing here does not pass the pub test. It's a really good um, colloquial saying, you know, does this pass the pub test? No, it doesn't. We have our small business owners here saying that they haven't been part of the consultation. We, we've got a progress association that supports this but doesn't have any meetings or any minutes and there are only three people on it. Th th this just does not pass the pub test. We are... The, the motion that we put forward last week gave Coles preferential treatment. There is no doubt about that. And you can't honestly sit here and think that by allowing them to lodge first that they're not giving, being given preferential treatment. So I will be pushing for a sh foreshadowed motion that this goes... This whole process is referred off to the Minister for, Lo for the new Minister for Local Government and to the Office of Local Government because this process stinks, councillors. We must rescind what we did last week, proceed with our planning study, um, as we have been um, urged to do, and when the planning study is completed and we can accelerate that study with extra resources, doesn't need to take till March next year, let's, let's um, fast-track that planning study, and when the planning study is completed or nearly complete, then we can accept DAs. Um, we're, we're putting ourselves, uh, and I can't quite understand. Um, uh, I just, uh, I, I, I'm, a bit, I'm very confused about this progress association that that has no members and no meetings. Right. That, Councillor Gibson, that's, again, um, I'll just remind you that you are not to make personal remarks, impute improper motives to anyone here, and you are. No, and personal. I'd ask that you stick to the to your issues and not to the individuals. Thank you. No, I'm not talking about individuals. I'm you talking are, about group you're, representation. You're talking about a, uh, you're making allegations about a group that you cannot support. So could you just move on to, um, okay. to well, debate I think it's pretty the significant. rescission motion? And I think, um, as I say, uh, if, this, if this process goes ahead um, where we allow Coles to jump the queue on all the other property owners, this will become a matter for the Office of Local Government and for the Minister and for the community who've... 1,100 signatures in three days. Are you all just going to ignore that, councillors? You can't ignore it. This has got to be an orderly process and we have to do the planning study first. We, the planning study can't come after the development's been lodged, it doesn't make sense. Councillors, you really must vote to rescind this motion and put forward, you can help word another motion. We can fast track the planning study so that um, we won't be wasting too much time. But um, our residents are expecting some consistency in decision making here. Thank you. Are there any other speakers? Councillor Martin. Thank you, Mayor. In some, res <clears throat> in some respects, we're looking at a high-stakes game. It's a game where the timetable has been dictated by the commercial imperatives of just one player. But our concerns need to be more fundamental. It's about preserving Neutral Bay Village as a viable village going forward. 
And we've heard tonight about the fears of some that if the Coles DA goes forward, they will be prejudiced. Now, standing here tonight, I actually don't know the answer. I'm sure the community, the broad-based community, is wanting to be heard on it. And indeed, they have been invited to be heard because we have put in motion a planning study. And the reason we put that planning study in motion is because we wanted to hear from the community. The community of people who live in our area, the community of people who have a commercial interest. I think it is wrong to jump the gun. And we jump the gun when we say to one of the players, we will join with you and give a consent, even though we don't yet know what our community is going to tell us through the consultation process that's in place. Now, we've heard a lot about the timeline. I've been hearing briefs and presentations presented by various players, including Coles and Woolworths. This timeline is driven by Woolworths leaving the site has been known for a long time. Coles well and truly had time to prepare for it. They appear to have left it for the last moment, by accident or by design. But at the end of the day, what we need to do as a council is ensure the ongoing viability of the Neutral Bay Village. And we do that by ensuring that at the end of whatever the rebuilding process involves, at the end, there is not just one player left in the village. Because we've heard tonight that part of the magic of the village is they is the diversity of enterprise. Now, council, in buying that land, acquiring that land and turning it into a car park, gave itself the ace. It is in a position to drive an outcome for a neutral bay that ensures its viability, that ensures its diversity. And as I said the last time I was on my feet about this, we should not be getting into one player's canoe and paddling that canoe forward. We should be, as a council, making sure that the voices of the big retailers, the small retailers and our community are held are taken into account when we decide the final course forward. And I just want to address one other matter. There's this idea that there is some certainty about what Coles is suggesting, which took me by surprise when I heard one speaker say, Coles would further explore the design. You know something? I would actually like to see that design so that we knew what we were signing off on when we give consent. Not before. The notion that we would give a blank check to one player in Neutral Bay is an affront to all of the players, all of the other players at Neutral Bay. Thank you, that's you. I've put forward the decision motion, hoping that we would step back and hear all involved. Thank you. Thank you. Are um, there any other speakers? Councillor Welsh. Um, I had my. Sorry, Councillor Price, if you, well, you'll have to, Councillor Price, if you could raise your 
So I can see it. Thank you. Councillor Welsh. I'm going to say the same thing I said last week because I just want to make it very clear on what exactly it is that this rescission motion is trying to stop. Okay. Whilst the issue of owner's consent may well be perceived as a tacit, tacit support for the proposal in the wider community, Council will continue to retain full control over this land even if the DA is approved. Owner's consent in no way infers approval of the development proposal. Owner's consent is provided to consider the proposal and determine whether reasonable public benefit may be leveraged from the site. Council owns a proportion of the land which will be the subject of the proposal, the car park, and therefore retains full control over the future of the proposal. Regardless of the owner's consent for the DA or even approval of the DA, Council effectively has veto powers if negotiations do not proceed satisfactorily. I was, I've sat here tonight and I've listened to so many of the local business owners and, and I can really feel the angst that's going on. Um, Mr. Atkins from Coles has, has said that he's willing to hear your concerns. He's going to be talking at another, a number of precinct meetings. I really suggest that you negotiate or you, you, you talk with Coles because they're willing. They've said it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next, um, just so you know, Councillor Porus was next, then Councillor Santa, then Councillor Burke. Councillor Porus. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to repeat what I said last week. We don't need to give owners consent. There's no reason for us to give owners consent. A lot of people have talked about this car park being the crown jewel. It is the crown jewel of Neutral Bay. And there's beautiful businesses around that crown jewel, eccentric, beautiful, small, medium-sized businesses. Uh, Mr. Atkins seems like a really nice man, very honest. Um, I'm sure Coles has all the best intentions at heart and would like to help and, you know, do what they can. But I'm sorry, I just, I can't trust that. I'd rather we see first what Coles plans to do. They own the land. They can lodge their own DA on their own land. They can show us the scheme of what they plan on doing. We can be a good council. We can engage both sides. We're very lucky here. We've got, you know, stakeholders who are very willing to come forward and, and help out with this. And we all agree that a plaza would be a great outcome there. But let's get it right. Let's make sure the businesses can survive. Let's make sure they have access to their businesses. Let's make sure that Coles do what they need to do and that everyone can be happy. And in order for this to happen, I think it would be best if we don't give owners consent, we don't get into the Coles canoe, as our fellow colleague said, we stay a little bit further back on the sideline, we engage both parties, we listen to both parties, and we try to forge forward with the best result possible. That's all I have to say, councillors, thank you. Um, Councillor Santa. Thank you, Mayor. I would like to ask a question of the General Manager. Does Council giving owners consent to Cole's lodgement of their DA mean that Council is removing any rights it has with regard to consideration of the DA in favour, say, of uh, sole determination by the North Sydney Planning Panel? Through you, Madam Mayor, uh, by giving owners consent to uh, lodge the development application, it commences the process for assessment under the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act. Um, as Councillor Welsh has pointed out, Council retains ownership of a portion of the land on which this development application is based and therefore has control over that land and does not have to give a right to use that land. Thank you. Do you, do you wish to speak further than that, Councillor Santa? No, Councillor Burke. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I really want to thank our community and businesses for coming along um, to speak to us tonight. There, there was uh, a serious allegation that we might ignore our community or businesses. I, I don't feel that ever happens. Um, there's a misunderstanding of the word ignore, clearly, because we listen um, I certainly do listen to all of our community, all of our residents, uh, and take on board all of your views. So I just wanted to clear up that uh, misstatement from earlier on, the use of the word ignore, that nothing could be further from the truth. Um, again, there's nothing stopping anyone from putting in a day and uh, a DA or, or requesting our consent for that um, you know, owner's consent. So that was made clear last week. 
Um, it's not a single uh, organisation that, that has that opportunity. Um, there is a long process ahead um, in which we can work through issues uh, with all and sundry. Um, I was elected as well on effectively uh, I'm, I'm, for, I'm for development, I'm not for overdevelopment. So a proposal that comes in that would basically respect our current LEP is, I think, um, something to be looked at um, more, more positively than something that looks to significantly raise heights. Um, so I think it's more realistic and more in line with what our community would want. Uh, from all of the feedback we had at our election, uh, and beyond. So um, my position on balance does not change from the last meeting. Are there Councillor Spencer Lee? Um, I think counter to Councillor Burke's eloquent um, speech, I'm not going to delve into the listening to the community or not. The community decides that for themselves. But we actually don't have a lot of time. And what this council seems to have a habit of doing is getting railroaded into making decisions at the last minute. Mm. Coles would like to submit a DA. Sorry, um, I am going to call you to order. That's a, a very wild statement and, again, imputing improper motives, so I'd ask that you withdraw and apologise. I will withdraw and apologise. I will just cite many occurrences where we are required to make decisions on short notice at the behest of third parties, and this is another example of that. We would like to see something develop there. Coles will only progress this or may only progress this if we provide them consent to lodge a DA. Um, this is, ladies and gentlemen, a bad form of governance. We are a form of government. This is a bad form of governance. This is like your neighbour turning up to your house and saying, please sign this form for a DA over your property without any formal plans, anything that's decided or, or subject to, and just asking you to sign the paperwork. This is like me deciding to ask council for uh, to, to sign a, a blank DA form for, you know, one of the community centres. This is bad governance. We need to do better. We can't be driven by the time frame of one interested party. You heard the fear in the community here. You heard the concern in the community here. Providing consent to a DA is not our only opportunity, but it is one of our greatest opportunities to negotiate, to set the terms to set the requirements to do the consultation. I've heard Councillor Welsh say, Coles are willing to negotiate, Coles are willing to listen. Yes, they're willing to listen, but there's no guarantee they'll negotiate. It's just great, they'll go out and listen to everyone. Community consultation is not listening, ladies and gentlemen, councillors. Community consultation is taking on the concerns of the community and altering your design. Is there any guarantee from Coles that they'll do that? Now, I'm not against development of this property. I actually, like many, support a plaza. I support doing something with this, what is quite, you know, is it a functional car park that could be so much more. But I want to do it in a way that is good governance, that we can hold our head up high, where we control the community consultation. Us, not Coles. What's going to happen is, is we're going to, end up with a proposal coming to us with last minute again from Cole saying, well, this needs to go to the Regional Planning Permission Council you know, next week. You need to sign off on this. It's ready to go. If it doesn't go, then you know, we'll, we'll close down the Woolworths and no one can get groceries. I don't know. And we'll be forced to make a decision again on short notice without decent community consultation. This is the process that it will go through. Time is limited. Time is not extensive on this process. I'm actually in support of Coles doing something. I'm in support of Arcadis doing something. I'm in support of something happening in this area. I just want it to be done uh, with good governance, with good process, and with great community consultation and with protections in for the small businesses. Now, I ran a public company. I know how public companies work. If I was Coles, I'd be sitting there going, fantastic. We'll get them to agree to all this and then We'll save some money on the bill by digging the car park out and we'll end up with closing the businesses down for four years, not two years, and we end up with 18 cafes around a Coles. That would be a fantastic result for Coles. The reality is that's what we have to protect because we like a village feel. 
We, the community, love our village feel. We love our small businesses. For 20 years, I bought my chicken at Mr Gordon's. I buy my fish across the road. I go to the florist, which is an amazing site. I go to Chargrill Charlie's and I go to Woolworths. And I want to keep that village feel. And the way that we do that, councillors, is good governance. I'm not against Coles submitting a DA, but I want to make sure that it's done complete protections for our local businesses. It's not to advantage Coles and the community gets a great result out of it. And we are not following that process here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Please consider governance, consider community feedback, rescind this. We'll send a strong message to Coles, not that we're rescinding it, that we just want to follow a good process. Let's follow a good process. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Berge. Thank you, um, Mayor. Um, the idea that we're not following a good process is is just not true, Councillor Spencerley. I have to say, it's not. A, if anyone is shocked that we are talking about a plaza in Neutral Bay, I'm not sure where you've been. A whole election was fought on the planning of the Neutral Bay Village and of having a plaza. In fact, Councillor Gibson ran on a two and a half thousand square metre open plaza and more parking. So none of this is new. I've got to just say, there is a lot of confusion around here. Uh, there is, there are no canoes. My, my point of order, Councillor Berry is referring to me and it, 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 there's got to be consistency of rules here. She's being yeah. personal. Yeah. Consistency uh, say, of rules. Say yes to a two and a half thousand square yes, metre public uh, plaza. Yeah. So if I could speak, thank you. But, yeah, uh, but Don't Mayor, I have to rule please. On the point of order. Mayor. Councillor Gibson, what are you suggesting? You are letting Councillor Berrigan make personal comments well, it, it about was, me. I, I'm ruling against you. It wasn't personal. It was a fact. She, she, she documented the fact. So thank you. Councillor Berrigan, continue. Thank you. Um, there are no canoes. The idea that we're hopping in a, coo a canoe with coals is laughable. Absolutely laughable. If anybody else wants to put in a DA, there's another canoe. We can have a flotilla of canoes. No problems at all. The idea that we're giving a blank cheque to some, one player in Neutral Bay, again, is laughable. There is no queue. This idea that they are queue jumping. Anyone can put in a DA at any time. The idea that we're meant to wait for the planning study, you need a planning study for a planning proposal. This is and a rezoning. This is not a planning proposal. This is a development application. Anyone can put in a DA at any time. So the idea that we are queue jumping is just not, that there is queue jumping going on is just not true. This is not a game. Some people seem to think this is a game. This is really serious. This is what we are elected to do. We are elected that when someone comes to us with a proposal that is in line with what our plans are. This council has said that is the place that we want a plaza. That is what we have all said. And now when someone comes to say, uh, I'd like to talk to you about actually funding your plaza, and remember funding it because the council is currently funding a huge debt down the road, thanks to the previous council, Point we should actually... Order, Mayor. Point of order. Council no, Councillor Gibson, impugn, Councillor impugn impugn Gibson previous she's not impugning the previous council. It's clear that, that, that we've had a report to the last meeting um, that documented that. Thank you. Continue, Councillor. I just wish your rules continue, were consistent. Continue, yeah. continue Councillor Berrigi, and please keep order, Councillor Gibson. Thank you, Mayor. What Coles have put before us is open to every other developer. I heard um, the CEO of Arcadia say that they would forward fund a plaza uh, before development. That is the first I have ever heard of that. I have been to all the briefings, I have heard from all of the developers and never once have I heard that. We can only deal with what is on the table. We cannot deal with whatever uh, someone might like to do, what someone could like to do, what someone may do in the future. And the implications and the in innuendo of what Coles will do from people sitting around this table is quite frankly wrong. We are not here to tell Coles uh, to imply what Coles may or may not do. That is not our role. Our role is what is before us. And Coles have come to us and asked the council to give owners consent 
to move forward with a DA which incorporates the plaza that we have been working towards for years. And yes, they're, they've got incentives. Funny that, that's how business works. They, uh, they bought a site and they take it over at the end of, the ne end of next year. And yes, they could just put in a DA on our site, on their site, sorry, just on their site, and we lose an opportunity. We do not lose any control by just allowing the process of granting owner's consent. And at the same time, any other developer can put in a DA as well. The point is, is that this has been something on our agenda for years, for the community. Everyone who went to the last election would have heard, we want something like the canopy. We want something like that in Neutral Bay. We want a functional, a functional car park. And I'm sorry, I use the car park. I'm in that area and I'm aware of the petition. And I was surrounded by people phoning me after saying, why is council selling the car park to Coles? Or actually, why is council giving the car park to Coles? And by the time I explained the process, they said, I wish I hadn't signed the petition. That's not my understanding. So uh, what I'm trying to... You, you, Mayor, I'm call, first of all, I will call the gallery to order. Everyone has listened to the other speakers without comment, and I'd ask that you do the same. Mayor, Secondly, what is your point of order? And I will rule on it. Councillor Berrigi was just impugning the, pet the petition put forward by the small business. No, she so, wasn't. Yes, she, she was. was not. And she was. Thank you, Councillor Berry. She was. You take the floor. You have a very short time left. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I will, however, say to the small businesses that we understand change is difficult. We understand that, you know, and we all shop at your shops. That's what we do. We live in our community. But you know that change is coming, and the best thing to do is to get involved. Go and speak, as Councillor Welsh said, come to the meetings, go, to, go and visit Coles, come and, come and speak to council minutes. officers. But we are going to move forward. I would urge councillors not to support the rescission so that we can actually see some progress on this plan which we have been developing for years. Thank you, Councillor Lamb. Yes, thank you. I would like to speak to all the small business owners and the precinct members who have come today Mr. Janakis, Mr. Nardi, Mr. Dorian, Mr. Pankov, Mr. Ekus, and Mrs. Peters and Mrs. Terevlin Jones. Everything you have said today is completely valid and completely understandable. That absolutely is a massive trend in our society of the rich and powerful taking over spaces that is previously owned by the community and by the small businesses. Everything you've said is valid, and I'm sorry to say, but you're too soon. This is going to be a battle that goes on for weeks and months and who knows. It's been two years already. I really implore you to please continue this spirit and this numbers in the future meetings. Every councillor here has said that they want to hear your voices. That is unanimous. Every single person here has said that. So please come to us in the future and we will surely listen. Email all of us. I'm sure you can find everything on the website. Thank you for coming today. Thank you. Um, Councillor um, Gibson, do you wish to exercise a right of reply? Uh, yes, I do, Mayor, and I just want to say again um, what the alternative motion would be, that we fast track the Neutral Bay, what, what do we call it, Neutral Bay planning, Neutral Bay planning study, that, that it be fast tracked by um, allocating extra resources to do so. And I will put forward a foreshadowed motion. Um, I'm just going to let you know you're, there is no foreshadowed motion on a rescission. The rescission ends the matter. If any councillor wishes to make a complaint to the Office of Local Government, they can do so at any time. So there's no need for a foreshadowed motion and you won't have the opportunity. So I suggest that you continue to use your right of reply in relation to the rescission and your motion if successful. Th thank you for that speech, Mayor. Um, we, I, I, I'm just gobsmacked by the inconsistency around this table. We listen to the community about Parawin Street. They come and they say they um, want something and we say, we're going to listen to you. Yep, we're going to vote with you. But here we're, we're sitting here saying, oh, we're listening to you, but we're not going to change our minds. Talk all you want, get a petition of 1,100 signatures in three days, 
um, yes, we're, we're going to sit here and and um, <laughs> and listen. There's a difference between listening and hearing, isn't there? You're listening, but you're ignoring. That's that's what you're doing. You're listening and saying, oh, well, we've listened to you. I'm still going about the same way I did last time. Now, when this process kicks off, there it, it, starts, it starts a process where there are time limits. This will have to be referred off to the, uh, to the planning panel. But uh, can I ask a question of the general manager? Council would write a... Um, a submission to the panel, that's right, isn't it? We would be submitters to the planning panel. Through you, Madam Mayor, given the, um, uh, given the, the council's consent, we would get independent advice in preparing that submission. Okay, so, uh, but a process starts. Once this DA is lodged, we, how, how long do we have to then refer it off to give it to the planning panel. Sorry, what? You, you're in the middle of your right of reply and you're asking questions yeah, about I, the I, development application process. I need some more information. Yes, because the, what we're, the we're finishing the debate and, and I ask what, that you continue. Because what some of the councillors were saying was that, well, this is going to take ages. No, it's not. Coles Lodge, the DA, um, that's, that's quickly got to be heard by the planning panel. This, this, they're not doing this. They're not doing this with the idea that this is going to go on for months or another few years. No, they'll lodge the DA, and this has to be dealt with quickly, or otherwise Coles will take us to court. That's what developers do when they don't get what they want. They take us to court. Um, that's not hard to understand. And I am just, I, I, I'm, I'm just quite stunned that a group of people that ran in an election um, against overdevelopment are now racing to... Um, are, are, are now giving all the help they can to a major developer to start their development Again, and get I'm their DA in as soon you're as they making, can. You're, you, are, you, you understand that you are not to impugn the motives, insult or make... No, I'm um, just... No, I'm or make or make personal remarks about other councillors, and that's what you're doing. So but I'd ask that you withdraw and apologise. But councillors make personal remarks about Councilor me. Councillor Gibson. Maybe there needs to be a bit Gibson, of fairness calling, in the chairing of these I'm meetings. I'm calling you to order. There just needs again, to be a little bit of fairness. I'm calling you to order again and ask that you withdraw and apologise I'm just that. going to... Con and I'm why going don't to you stick on. to the point and the policy instead of the people? Well, Councillor Berrigy should do the same. There's Again, some, one I'm going to call for, you to one order. One rule for I'm me gonna, and no. one rule for everyone Count, else. Councillor and Gibson. I think the community here don't like Count, it very much, Mayor. Well, the community have an opportunity at the next election. Oh, they Councillor, sure do. Councillor Gibson, I'm asking that you withdraw and apologise those remarks about your fellow councillors. What, that they ran on a, a, on a no, platform that you are, you, are, you are suggesting... Oh, just finish. Finish. You've got... 20 more seconds. No, that you have to stop the clock when you're no, giving me lectures, no, Mayor. No, you so don't. you give me a lecture for three minutes of my five minutes Councilor so I Gibson, can't talk. When the chair now, speaks. members of the community, what do you think about no, the way this meeting's being chaired? Councillor Gibson, chair? again, I'm it's, calling you And you order. say you're listening, Mayor. Councillor you Gibson, listening. you have an obligation you under say this you are listening. That's your five you minutes. You are saying you're living. Take, the, take your seat. Oh, well, what do take the community think? So I don't have get time to have my I'm calling you to order under clause 6.9 of the COVID meeting. I have my my five minutes. You've had your five minutes. I Sit haven't down. had my five minutes. Sit You've down. had my five minutes, no. Mayor. Counsel Counselor You've Gibson. had my five minutes. Councillor Gibson. Shame on you, Thank Mayor you for Baker. that act of disorder. Shame on you, Councillor Gibson. Thank Shame you. on you. I'm putting, you I'm putting the rescission. All those Shame in favour of the rescission, those against, the rescission is lost. Thank you. That brings the meeting to a close. The meeting is closed.